So as of right now, uh, Nick, you have a meeting with your brother, Stan. Stan um, is the, I'm going to get rid of your icon there. Um, Stan is the, you know, he's the head of the household. He's the one that, uh, of the Gedeke brothers, he is uh, the one that, that is the, the meat and potatoes of the, of the organization, right? He's a, it's a construction company. He started it. He brought his, uh, the rest of the brothers in. Uh, Nicholas is the, the youngest of the, of the, the lot, and he's also the prettiest. So the, the, with the thinking being that he will eventually be the face of the organization, you know, uh, the negotiator, that kind of thing. Um, but he's still pretty young at this gotcha. point. Um, and I don't know how much of your of the background stuff that you've you've read, but um, Stan has a problem. There is uh, there's a uh, warehouse that uh, that Stan just recently bought, and there's been some problems at this warehouse. Namely, uh, there's been some accidents happening, some weird occurrences going on, and uh, that's, it's March, and you know, this, you've only had this, uh, this warehouse for about three months, and weird uh -huh. crap keeps happening. Um, the first thing that, uh, it, like strange accidents, um, there was an accountant at, right after you, uh, the company bought the warehouse uh, an accountant was there talking to uh, Stan about you know some finance things and then as he was leaving um, a pallet of wood was being uh, hoisted onto a flatbed truck the um, support strap snapped and crushed him underneath these uh, this pallet um, and then within a couple of days a the morning crew came in and found the night watchman had hung himself inside. Uh, and then just a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a uh, truck that was making a delivery, and the just for no reason, the truck caught fire and burned uh, the, the driver and passenger alive. So police have been out to this warehouse a couple of times because of th these weird occurrences. Uh, Stan is beside himself with, you know, he, uh, Stan's not the kind of guy who's going to concern himself too much about other people's well-being, but he's certainly uh, concerned about his image. And when the uh, when the workers uh, at this warehouse decided that they were they were getting spooked, they're thinking that this place is cursed, something's going on. Um, Stan was like, well, he talked to the, the, the manager and said, look, you know, uh, we'll figure out what's going on. Well, w within like a day or two, uh, there was um, some renovation going on, and one of the walls in the back of the warehouse was removed. It was just a drywall. You know, it's like a, almost, at first it looked just like maybe just some sort of an enclosure or something like that. Popped it open, and there's this crate that had been walled up inside this, this warehouse. And the workers all think that this crate, whatever it is, is the cause of all this bad stuff that's going on. All, you know, they, they just gives them all the heebie-jeebies. So Stan went to Nick and said, look, this is what's going on. You know I've been having these problems. Uh, trying to, you know, this warehouse is strategically located right where we need it to be. Uh, so that way we can begin our, you know, empire of, of uh, commercial construction all throughout the city. And the, I need you to handle this. I need you to find somebody, somebody you know, somebody you trust, uh, and get rid of this thing. And um, one of the reasons why he doesn't want to do it himself is there's a, a little bit more of a history to this warehouse than just it was there he bought it um it, it had been uh, basically abandoned for better part of like i don't know like three or four years and word on the street was that one of the local uh mob groups was using it to um bootleg liquor and 
Stan thinks that whatever is in this box, he doesn't believe that it's uh, there's a curse or anything like that. He doesn't believe any of the, anything of the sort. He thinks that one of these mobster guys who he has ties with might be trying to set him up. You know, cops keep coming out here looking at stuff. Eventually, they were going to find this box. If it's got liquor or something in it and it looks like I've been hiding it, you know, then all of a sudden I'm, I'm the one that looks like the ass, right? So, yeah, it's curtains. Exactly. Exactly. Curtains. So, right. so he's like, because I have business dealings with the with Hogan, who's the guy who used to run liquor out of this plane, I don't want to look like I don't trust the guy. So if I go in there and I start making a noise, you know, it's going to be noticed. But my little brother goes in there, or maybe you hire somebody to go in there and get it out of there. That would probably be the best thing to do. Yep. So, um, so that's the long and short of, of why you're doing what you're you're doing. You're you're the the whole point of, of of your task is find somebody, either do it yourself or find somebody to help you get rid of this crate out of this warehouse as soon as you can without without anybody knowing about it. Um. So switching over to Walter. Um, now Walter, on your background or the background information um the very first line in that background they beat you up and left you for dead and why uh you read you've read your letter correct Mm -hmm. okay so you know kind of what's going on here as well there's something about this warehouse and your boss sent you there to go snoop and see what you can find out and you woke up in the hospital um, bumps and bruises. Um, you were, uh, as we are speaking right now, uh, you have just been released by your doctor. Uh, you, okay. were, you were at Barnes Hospital, which is uh, from from where the warehouse was, uh, probably about a mile and a half, two miles away. And uh, the the doctor tells you that you were there for, you know, you've been been there overnight. That you sustained some bumps and bruises. Um, there's really no sign of lasting damage and as as and he very bluntly says there's honestly no reason why you should have been unconscious as long as you had been uh other than maybe just some sort of uh mental strain or maybe you you know you you fainted or maybe you had a seizure so because that the the way you acted the vapors yes you had the vapors and uh uh you were overwhelmed and came in and you were completely unconscious uh, when they brought you in. And they found you, like, in a ditch near the river. So, um, where we will start is, if you look at your characters, uh, character sheets, both of you should have, down. In, if you scroll all the way down, you should have a uh, meaningful locations... Um, Walter, you're, I forgot to put that on yours, so my bad. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a speakeasy, and I'll actually add it right now, um, called uh, Midtowns. No, I have meaningful locations. Yes, I, just I, got, I got St. Louis Public Library. Right, I forgot to add Midtowns on okay. here, so okay, I'm, I'm it. putting it on right now. Midtowns? Yep, it is a speakeasy. Okay. If I could spell. Okay. And there we go. All right. So um, where we will start this is you are both at, um, I didn't save it. Um, You're both at Midtowns. Um, Walter. You're there for whatever reason. You know, you you had just been released from the hospital. You're not quite sure what's going on. Um, what 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 would you have done like immediately well, after being released? It would make sense that uh, that this has been a trying evening. Uh, perhaps a perhaps a bit of brandy, cigar. Okay. Um, so and, and in at the time. 
Midtown's is Midtown's is actually near St. Louis University, which is kind of a um, it's kind of a blue collar area. So, and but uh, some of the intelligentsia would go to uh, Midtown's as well. So, this it, it's a place for not just uh, not just blue collar workers and whatnot, but also um, uh, university types, scholars, things like that. It's a real melting pot of of different uh, of the social structure. There's not a whole lot of um, high society here, although there are a couple of people who would, I guess, consider be slumming in in it, but uh, mostly just to kind of hang out with some uh, some intellectuals and talk about politics and things like that. All right. All right. So Mid Midtowns is ran by a guy named Tony Miller. Tony's, uh, think of, um, he's kind of like uh, Woody from Cheers, like kind of a dope, but uh, everybody really loves him. And, and he's, he remembers everybody's name and, and knows, he knows like everybody's business too. So he's, he's kind of like uh, uh, the, the person to talk to when it comes to finding out information. Got it. Well, uh, Walter will uh, gingerly open the door. It looks like he's got a, his uh, right arm's a little bit sore from the, the beating he took. All right. Tony says, uh, Walter, what gives? Tony, it's been a hell of a night. Can I, uh, can you just give me a, give me a brandy and, uh, I don't know whatever whatever you got to smoke whatever cigars you've got I I won't be picky tonight. All right, he says. Uh, yeah, 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 pal. No problem. No problem. Um, he pours you a double. He says, uh, you know, on a house, on a house. So uh, looks like you've been through the ringer. Yeah, Tony. You know, it's a long story. I I don't know that if I I don't know how much I want to get into it right now. But but yeah, I got uh, I got roughed up by a couple guys. Just trying to do my job, you know. Just trying to satisfy my boss. Uh, you know, I guess, I guess it happens. It, I, not usually, I'm not used to getting beat up in my line of work. You know what I mean? Right, right, yeah. Oh well, yeah, yeah. So, uh, somebody just had a beef with you, huh? Well, you know, it's uh, it was a couple guys. Uh, you know, I'd like to say it took a couple guys, but I, they probably only needed one. <laughs> well, here, let me light uh, your let me light your uh, your stogie for you. Says, uh, uh, ah, thanks. Ah, uh, uh, what? Where'd you get these imported? Uh, Cuba. It says they're right on the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that, Tony. That's okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. That that might not really be Cuban. Hmm. It says on the box, but that just might be. Mar Forget it. Thanks, Tony. You got it, buddy. And then uh, about that time is when Nick comes walking in. He goes, hey, Nicky, there he is. Hey, Tony, what's up? Oh, yeah. Tommy, to Tommy, excuse me. It's been a, it's been a day. <laughs> I bet. I bet. What are you, what are you drinking? Can I, get, can I get one on the rocks? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the bourbon out. Is that good enough for you? Oh, perfect. Speaking my language. All right. Yeah, Walter here was just telling me he just got uh, he just got worked over. You, I, hey, Walter. Yeah, well, what's news? He represents me, right? I would know him. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Walter uh, Walter's firm does represent. He represents uh, um, your brother. Well, he represents the business. So. Yeah. Not Walter specifically, because he's a junior partner, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. All right. So maybe I wouldn't. Okay. Hey. What's Mr. Gedeke? What's up? Well, uh, I just had, I had a little bit of a an incident. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I you know I hate to speak ill, but you know it was some of those guys in the warehouse district. I was just you know following up on something for from my boss, and and well. Well, they laid one on me. They laid a couple on me. Uh, uh, they must have hit me hard. I was out for a while. Near my warehouse? 
Uh, and then uh, Walter kind of reaches up and like gingerly like touches his nose a little bit, seems to wince a little bit. Yeah, um, Nick, he he looks like he's he's got a shiner, but he doesn't look like he was really worked over. He just more, more he looks like maybe he might have bumped his bu- like bumped his eye on the corner of a desk or something. He doesn't yeah. look like that bad. Oh, okay, he doesn't look like a like a piece of meat. No, no, not at all. Okay, okay. Uh, well, um. You don't look. Uh, you don't look uh, so bad to me. Uh, where where'd this happen? Over over by my place, or? Uh... Well, it was. Uh, it was down on Arsenal Street. Yep, that's exactly where yours is. Ugh. That's that's the that's the sixth that's the sixth crazy thing that's happened. I I can't. I don't. I don't know. And and Stan, well, he wants me to. <sighs> Jeez, and at that point, I'm gonna I'm gonna drain my drink and just kind of shake my head. Walter takes a couple more puffs off the cigar, and he's kind of gingerly drinking the the bourbon. I I I don't know what to say. I, I was supposed to go down there to, to find this this package, uh, you know, and and Walter kind of gets his voice a little bit low. It's a prohibition thing. They, it's a tax thing, a prohibition thing. I was supposed to go down there and find this this package. Uh, yeah, they they caught me. Uh, I was looking around. I, I wasn't kind of. I was not trying to be too conspicuous. This isn't really my forte. I, I, I much better in a courtroom than than sneaking around a warehouse in the dark. But uh, but uh, they found me and they they gave me the once over, the twice over. Um, at this point, Nick is going to probably move to the seat right next to Walter. Because okay. I imagine I was at least a seat over. Um, and he's going to say, you, were, you, was, uh, <laughs> you was looking for a package in, uh, down near Arsenal Street. You're looking for, you're looking for the thing I was steal- I'm, I'm looking for? It's a well, big, uh, big crate. What do you, what do you, well, yeah, well, yeah, it was, it was a, it's, it's a crate. It's a crate. I was, uh. Uh, sent down to to find the crate. I don't know. I have no idea what's in it. I was just told it was there. Who told you to come down? You know, uh, if I can get a hold of the crate, we might be able to. We might be able to. I don't know. There's there's a case pending. There's there's maybe a raid, possibly. A raid. My, a my raid. boss was. My boss was a little. What's the best way to put it? He was very adamant that he wanted me to go find this crate, but they did not give me a ton of details. For Christ's sake, a raid. The coppers are coming down on me? Okay. All right. You know what? Can I get another, Tommy? Can I get one right. more? Right on top of you there, bud. Now, he, he pours, he pours um, you another now, double. Eric, would this, thing, would this thing be in my car right now, or do I like know where it is under a tarp at the... It's warehouse. The, it's or? actually at. It's actually still at the warehouse. Um, okay. It's mostly because you know you're, you're, the day shift is still was was still there. At least uh, that's what that's what Stan said right. was you know hey you got to do it when it's quiet. You got to wait for the night the day shift to leave. You got to go in there. You got to get rid of it quietly. Obviously during the day you would see, you know people would see you. So it, it's still it's it's evening time now. So you you were gonna wait a few hours and then you were gonna go you know po- possibly check it out. But now, yeah, it seems things have advanced a little bit. I, I, you know, I'm not really. A, I don't. I don't like this. I don't like being a part of this. You know, I have a feeling I'm being asked to do something that's not quite on the up and up. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I kind of have to do what I'm told. I mean, I'm just a junior partner. If I want to get any further, that's right. You got to take your, play ball. You got to take your licks. You know. <laughs> Sometimes the licks come a, come a little faster and a little bit more shaped like a fist, but they're licks, you know. And, what yeah, I mean? and physically, physically the licks come. <laughs> yes, that's that's the joke I was making. Thank you, Walter. Yeah, no, no, um, that's okay. I, you know, the the guy had a, 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 a wicked right hook, wicked. Yeah, it seems like it. Uh so you're looking for the scr- Um, you know what? Hmm. I feel like something's happening here. I feel like, I feel like we can put this together. 
you know, if we can if we can get this crate, apparently I don't know what the crate contains, but if we get the crate out of there before the raid comes, then then it'll be That's... beneficial to one of our clients. As the only, it's only Maybe. only reason I can think that that I'd be down there looking for this, but uh, but you know, uh, Tony, can I get another belt here? All right, right at you, boss. Pours you another one. He goes, uh, uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be right back. I gotta go get uh, some more bourbon uh, from downstairs. Come on. Get the so, good stuff. I'll pay for it. So uh, if you if you notice on the screen there, there's your picture of uh, that. That's the picture of uh, Midtowns. That I've got for you guys. Um, it's not nearly that busy, though, at this point. Wow. Uh, so many Caucasians. <laughs> 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 Kevin, can you hear us? Where'd you get all these pictures? You're, You're muted. Your mic's off, dude. There you go. There, there we go. I shouldn't be now. There I should is. be able to Yay. speak now. Yeah. yeah um, sound. What I um <laughs> my my tricks are uh when it comes to the pictures is I went and did Google image searches of like old pictures of different things and then I ran them through a gotcha. uh an app I've got through my phone that uh turns things into like almost like impressionist art. So Oh cool. Yeah, I I did that nice. with a picture I did at a show. But it had color so I so it looks totally different. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so as you guys are having this discussion, the, the and uh, Tony had just uh, bought, you know he just killed that uh, that bottle and had just uh, gone out uh, to go downstairs. And um, as he passes uh, a lone gentleman in the corner, he you hear him very distinctly say, "Do you need anything, Mister Falstaff?" No. Uh Thank you. I'm I'm fine for now. Um, At the name Falstaff, Walter kind of per perks up a second and kind of turns toward that corner. Okay. Um, here, let me do this. Um, the player is is interested in this name Falstaff because I remember that name. <laughs> but does <laughs> Nikki know anything about this guy? Um, Falstaffs are are the Falstaff family. Um, here, let me switch your point of view here so you can see everybody's uh, everybody's picture. Um, uh, scroll it down a little bit. There we go. Um, the name Falstaff is uh, is famous in St. Louis. Uh, everybody knows who the Falstaffs are. They are one of the richest families in town. Uh, the they used to run the Falstaff Brewery. Uh, that once Prohibition hit, they had to shut it down. They started uh, trying making things like soft drinks and and things like that, but uh, really didn't didn't go through real well. Uh, the the bad thing or the thing about that most people know in addition to being super rich, is that the Falstaff uh, family is, um, uh, the, the, it's a legend, really, it's, it, that uh, the family is cursed, that um, the members of the family have, ki have all killed themselves, all kind of in the same way. Uh, they're very aloof uh, people. Um, so, yeah, so that you would know all of that stuff. Aha. Hmm. So, um, da, 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 da. yeah, so, yeah, you hear um, Tony addresses Mr. Falstaff in the corner there. Um, uh, let's Nick, see. If, 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 Nick, if you if you can excuse me for a minute, Mr. Mr. Gedeke, excuse me, if you can if you can pardon yeah. me for, for just a minute. Yeah, of course. Of course. Walter kind of stands up and tries to straighten himself up a little bit, kind of smooth out his jacket, adjust his tie a little, uh, make sure his uh, make sure his shirt is uh, the points are tidy, and uh, runs his hand through his hair a little bit, and then turns to go uh, to to uh, approach Mr. Falstaff. Kevin, can, can excuse. You, hold on one second, real quick. Yeah. Kevin, can you see your character sheet at all? I can, yes. Okay. Um, I am going to do something real quick that I did for everybody else uh, as they were popping on. Um, I'm making it so that way uh, you can 
make sure that you can see some of the things that you're supposed to see here. So drag you on there. Okay, there's 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 uh, the beautiful Charles Falstaff right there in the bot in the on the picture. If you, I'll put it up near the near the top there. Can you see the icon there? I can. Okay. Um, I will make it so that way you can. There's Charles Falstaff. There you go. And you should be able to activate him now if you click on him. Oh. Let me switch back over to. There you go. All right. And if you, when you click on him on the top left, you should see a bar that says bonus roll, penalty roll, and percent roll. And then you should also see the same thing in uh, white, blue, and red underneath our names on the left bottom. You see those? I see a red circle, green circle, blue circle. Okay. Um, and I see like a status thing. Look on the top left of your screen. Do I need to zoom out or something? Yeah, you might. Oh, top left of. If you have your your guy activated, you should have a, a, a like a white bar on just underneath where it says. Uh, I see it. I yep. see it. Bonus roll, penalty roll, percent roll. Yeah, and then underneath, if you and then there's our uh, our avatars down at the bottom there, and then you should see the same thing, but in a, a white, blue, and red. Do you see that too? I don't know. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Seems like my window is. I see my my uh, my face in the uh, little screen down here where it says Kevin S. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes. Okay. There's nothing underneath it that okay. I can see. Well, as long as you can see if, when you activate uh, your icon there, you, and you can press uh, percent roll. Uh, on the right hand side where you have uh, your settings mm -hmm. for roll 20 uh, click the cog wheel and then about midway down you should see a checkbox for enable 3d dice and another one for automatically roll 3d dice done and done okay and now if you hit percent roll now that your guys activated hit percent roll you should see your dice roll there they are okay very nice all right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete him off of there. Well, you know what? Since you guys are all having conversation here, I will. Uh, you guys can go ahead and do go ahead and role play. I'm gonna switch things over to the bar again, and then I'm gonna put your icons on there so that way, if you have to roll something, you can you can roll. But go ahead and keep. Uh, you can continue role play. Role play. That's never done that before. <laughs> let me let me flip the switch here <laughs> uh, uh mr mr falstaff sir uh yes can i help you oh yes yes i uh i work for the phoenix group i uh my you you're very well acquainted with my my senior partner uh the name is walter walter pappas and walter puts his hand out to to shake um charles will set his drink down kind of wipe his own hand off and reach up and shake uh, well met walter thank you what are you drinking if i might ask ah uh, uh, i like my whiskey neat if you must ask whiskey whiskey yes yes a uh, bourbon man myself uh are you familiar with uh, mr gedicky Yes. Uh, His family is also a client of the firm. Yes, I am familiar with the Gedekis. Very good, very good. Uh, what brings you to uh, Midtowns, if I might inquire? I'm guessing Midtowns is like a speakeasy or something? Yes, it's, um, that's, that's correct. It is a, it's a speakeasy near St. Louis University that, um, um, Quite frankly, none of your social circle would uh, would go to a place like this. So it's a very nice place for for Charles to go to kind of get away from it all. 
Well, Walter, as you know, we all need our Denzville repute to respire to whenever we need a little time to ourselves. Nothing could be for, could nothing could be truer, sir. Nothing could be truer. Oh, oh, pardon me for interrupting you. I, I just I, I heard I heard uh, Tony mention your name and thought it might be prudent for me to introduce myself. No interruption at all, my friend. Do enjoy your bourbon. And you your whiskey. And uh, and Walter gives like a, a a little bit of a nod, a slight bow, and goes back to the bar. Uh, to sit next to Nick. All right, Kevin, a little bit of a, a background for you. Um, Charles is uh, one of the reasons why you're here is you were supposed to meet a friend, uh, Thomas Rice. Thomas was supposed to, he had uh, come into some information about a warehouse that used to belong to uh, your brother, Billy. Um, the, it's a, the warehouse is uh, used to. It was a warehouse for a business venture that Billy was involved with. Uh, he was like a, he was a, a, a partial. He was a partner in, in this business, um, and the business itself was called uh, FRC Freight, and it went belly up after Billy killed himself. And what Thomas tells you is that he there is some uh, strong suspicion that uh, there's something in this warehouse that may have once belonged to Billy and after the business went belly up the warehouse kind of went into disrepair for a while and was being squatted in uh, by a some members of the Hogan gang and it was uh, believed that they were bootlegging booze out of the warehouse um, the item that uh, Thomas was was keen on was a, a box that he says uh, that Billy had shipped or had sent from Romania, but it never had never arrived, and he believed and it was uh, to be shipped to FRC Freight, but it, it had never it, it never showed up. Um, so about about a week ago. Uh, a gentleman came to Thomas and said that he was very keen on getting this box because he was Billy's partner in retrieving it and that he was offering Thomas money for it. Thomas didn't really bite on that and then came directly to you and said, we need to do something about this because if it's something that has to do with Billy, um, it could have it, it could be linked back to both of us. So at this point, he's he said he was going to look into it. He was going to he was going to meet you here at Midtowns to to kind of tell you what he found out. So that's one of the reasons why you're re, you're really why you're here. Okay. Now I wouldn't be privy to any of that information besides the Hogan Gang stuff, and I I wouldn't know that this was his brother's warehouse that my family now has or, or any of that, would I? Not really, no. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a secret. I mean, FRC Freight was an actual business. Uh, what you may not know is who actually owned it. It, it was one of those that it was, it was managed by a holding company, things like that. It wasn't something that, you know, um, you know, Falstaff actually like showed up every day and worked at. It was, you know, it was like a business that he owned with two other partners. So, you, gotcha. you, you may yeah, actually uh, that would call we could just call for a role here let's do what's called a no role and what that is is it's possibly not general knowledge but it would be for somebody who's maybe in the business world uh, especially locally so uh, if you click your guy and look at your uh, character sheet there Nicholas Gedeke uh, mm. You will see his education is 60%. And what you do is when you roll a no roll, you're going to hit percent roll, and you're going to try and get a 60 or less. Okay, so I don't need to press anything on the character sheet. I'm just pressing a percentile dice on the... On the screen itself, yeah. In the, uh, okay, all right, just checking. Yeah, if you... Because I know that there's, like, pictures of dice. And, yeah, yeah. The, the, if you were to click one of those... Um, there you go. Uh, that is an 81. So, um, yeah, you, you don't really, you, you don't really know, uh, you know, that it was, a a business, it was owned by some, some rich dudes, but other than that, 
yeah, you you don't you honestly you probably never even had an occasion to care who who used to own it. Um, gotcha. But anyway, if if you look on your character sheet and you hit one of those dice on there, you can do that now if you want to. But it, it, to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Uh, but if you hit mm -hmm. if you hit the uh, let's say you hit the the education button, uh, the icon next to your edu education there, which was what sixty. Yeah. It, yeah. Go ahead and hit that uh, D twenty looking thing next to your education. I'm trying to find it. I I was at electric repair and now I'm at fast talk. <laughs> am I am I too far down? Yeah, you're too far down. Scroll up. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. There... And now what it okay, does? I hit that button. Yeah, oh. it, and what it does is it rolls. It doesn't just roll one percentage. It rolls three sets of percentages. And then if you look at the chat uh, box, go to the the the. Mm -hmm. chat, and it'll show you value 60 value 30 value 12 that's your that's your straight up stat roll or your yeah your straight up roll your half roll and then your quarter roll so if i would have said hey this oh wow this is pretty difficult you have to roll under half but instead of just rolling once it rolls it three different times which doesn't make any sense interesting well at least we know Yep. So in, in, instead of having all of that, which seems very confusing to me, I just went ahead and made a macro for just a percent roll to roll up on the screen. So that way we can just do it that way. Because otherwise it's just like You're a, a talented person. Mess right? of, well, <laughs> I, I can't take uh, total credit for that. I, I did, they have a, a pretty extensive wiki on how to uh, do macros. So Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You, you, yeah. The, you would know that... Uh, Possibly that Falstaff may not, not that Falstaff was involved in the ownership of uh, FRC Freight, but you certainly would know, uh, or you would, it, it would be logical to think that he would know who used to own it. Mm. Okay. I'm just trying to think if, uh, I, I mean, I know I'm like a face man, but at the same time, I don't know if I'm going to come out and say to a guy I just know of in a bar, like, Hey, you know anything about this uh, fucking box I got here? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but at the same time, the plot needs to progress. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm 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 at an impasse, gentlemen. <laughs> well, the mayor. Um, oh. What we what uh, what hasn't been said is it's relatively quiet in here. And it's quite mm -hmm. possible that, um, Charles, you've been kind of eavesdropping and, and hearing what's been going on. So there, okay. there, that way there's, there's no, you don't, we don't have to like stumble into this. You, you kind of get the gist of what's going on. As soon as they started talking about, uh, warehouse, things like that, it's like, wait a minute. And then, you know, and then when, uh, Walt, uh, Walter says it's on Arsenal street, you're like, uh, oh, so. So after Walter walks away, um, I've just been continuing to study them. And it's almost as if I've kind of come to a, a final decision. And uh, I kind of raise my, my hand up. Uh, Walter. Yes, I, should, yes. I, yes, Mr. Uh, Falstaff. Would you, would you and your friend join me for a drink? I... I'm at my lonesome this evening, and a little company wouldn't be too much to ask, I hope. Walter kind of looks over at Nick with uh, a wide eyes and a, a grin appearing on his face. Uh, uh, as long as you don't mind that I drink mine on the rocks, we'll be all right. Oh. Well, culture only travels so far within within a man. <laughs> Every now and then I salute as well. I just try not to do it in public. Uh, certainly, well, uh, we'd be we'd be happy to sit with you, Mister Falstaff. Please, and, uh, please. Walter kind of makes the nod and uh, grabs the little bourbon he's got left, and uh, I hope you don't mind if I smoke. Why would I ever mind that? I have a pipe around here somewhere. I may join you. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll grab my uh, I'll grab my glass and also uh, sidle into the. Uh, he's at a he's at a table a booth. A... Uh, just like a corner table. There's not really a booth in here. It's not not oh, big corner. enough. Okay. I'm gonna flag yeah, Tony okay. down. 
Yeah, as he comes walking back and he goes, oh, uh, moving the party to the back, I see. Uh, what can I get you, fellas? Uh, whatever these two gentlemen want, uh, please keep my tab open. Oh, yeah. I'll yes, have a topper myself. Ah, oh, yes. Here you are. You want me to just leave the bottle? If you're so inclined. All right, he, he it leaves doesn't it. appear you're busy enough to need it tonight. Uh, not this time of day. Oh, it's a it's during the day. Well, it's uh, it's early <laughs> evening. Yeah, it's. Oh, it's, okay, okay. So tonight would still work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, uh, well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Falstaff, for inviting us over. And you know, it's uh, quite an honor to sit with you and have a have a share a drink. Please, we're all equals in a place like this. Tell me, Walter, Walter. Walter seems much more nervous than he possibly should be. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, the company that you work for, Walter. I, I must admit I've heard the name, but I'd like to know a little bit more. Well, well sir, uh, as you might know, the Phoenix Group is one of the, the most uh, well-known, the most prestigious firms in St. Louis. We, uh, we have quite a lot of large business. We deal with a lot of the larger banking firms. Uh, a lot of the larger real estate firms, you know, as as you're well aware, you know, we we've dealt with your company, with your with your family, family for years. Um, uh, lots of different holdings in the in the uh, in the city. Uh, I, again, uh, the senior partners move in uh, rarefied circles. Ah, uh, well, as, as you would you be know, familiar. I've, <laughs> well, I've I do have my accountants. Uh, they do handle some things like that but like I said I've I've dabbled as well and your friend here I, I don't believe we've had an introduction Nicholas Gedeke uh, from the Gedeke Brothers construction company we uh, we recently bought a uh, warehouse on uh, Arsenal you did a lot of weird stuff going on you don't say yeah, Walter just got uh, smacked around around the corner from it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know that it was that was it was Mister Gedeke's men that 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 did smack me about uh, the head and neck. Uh, I, I, I did get a good a good hit in the eye, um, uh, but 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 yeah, I, I was I was down there looking around for some things uh, for the firm. Uh, just researching some things, looking some things up about the warehouse. Again, Mr. Gedeke's family, uh, I believe his brother is the the holder of the warehouse currently, and, and, and I was down there uh, looking into some things for the firm. Uh, apparently, I looked a little too hard. I see. Well, let me drop all pretense. Uh, of course, I am well familiar with the Phoenix group, but... Uh, you are the law firm that repped my brother for a time. And, uh, Nicholas, I, uh, I'm obviously familiar with your, with your group as well. I must admit, I overheard your conversation earlier, and, well, it, it intrigued me. For, you see, not only was that building part of my... Uh, family's enterprise at some point in time, but it was specifically Billy's. I didn't have any dealings with it myself, but from what I understand, he was supposed to receive something that was to be delivered there, and, well, I have information about it, but if it's something related to Billy, I am very much interested. Oh. All right, look, I'll, I'll be straight with you guys. Um... I was down there for the mayor. Um, I, I, I kind of, I'm, I kind of act uh, in a, in a junior partner way. I act as counsel for the for the city, uh, the mayor's office, and uh, apparently there was something that a crate at the warehouse. The mayor was worried that it might be something untoward, and that he might be wrapped up in it. So I was sent down there to try and find out what it was that the mayor didn't couldn't tell me and no one else could tell me so um the mayor is, is quite worried about whatever's in that crate i see well let me tell you this if billy's wrapped up in it then 
who knows what could be in that crate. That's why I would like to get my hands on it myself. I don't need anything else tarnishing my family's reputation. We have enough rumors milling about. Billy had a taste for the antiquities. Sometimes those ran a little bit less than esteemed. Well, Mr. Falstaff, I, um, you might be in luck because Stan, my brother, um, just charged me with getting rid of a crate from said warehouse. And personally, I don't know what to do with it, but since used twos are uh, both kind of looking for it, I think we can come to some sort of accord here. So you have it within a short distance of here? Uh, where's this place in relation to where the warehouse is? Yeah, you're about... Eight. I know that it's at the warehouse, but I don't know if... Yeah, from from uh, Sorry? from from Midtowns to the warehouse, you're about about twelve blocks away. Oh, okay. So I I would probably say that's close then. Right. <laughs> right. Pe people were hardier back then; they walked more. <clears throat> oh, it's it's real close. It's uh it's under a uh, under a couple tarps over at the warehouse. I'm just waiting for uh. The work day to die down before I, I go scoop it up and figure out what to do with it. But if uh, if you guys are looking for it, I mean, my car's got enough seats. I assume well, I have a car. Well, I have a car, right? I must admit, I was awaiting the arrival of a friend before I went off on any kind of venture towards Arsenal Street. But perhaps we could. Perhaps we might set out early if he does not arrive soon. Walter, uh, Walter tips back the last of his bourbon, knocks his glass on the table, and says, uh, "Well, I, I, I think I'm done nursing this black eye. So, uh, whenever you guys are ready to go, let's, uh, let's, let's go. I, this, if I can get this taken care of, it'll give me a good bump. I might be able to make a regular partner." Hmm. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and look at my watch. What, what time is it? Uh, it's, uh, just about 6 p.m. So would that be, that's probably when the whistle blows, right? I mean... Yeah, pretty much. So, but, I mean, there's still going to okay. be some people malingering around, um, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it wouldn't be too, too much longer. Okay. I just don't know if we're, if we should wait for anyone else or if we should, uh, wait like an extra half hour to an hour before heading out I don't know about either of you but I wouldn't mind stealing my nerves a little bit with another drink before I head out on this venture who knows what we might unearth in that crate Mr. Falstaff I think that is a fine idea Tony I, uh, yeah. yeah yes Walt we, well, oh. sorry Mr. Falstaff go ahead Oh, I was merely going to quip about the time that my brother had a stuffed human body from some dastardly African nation. It might be something like that. That certainly would set the mayor on edge. But why? I I don't know. Those guys, those guys laid into me pretty good. I don't know. An antiquity? Would that be enough to beat up a guy? Who can say? Sometimes antiquities are plated with gold or some other rare gem. It could really be anything that could sets, could make somebody interested in it. Perhaps they've become rather protective. In any event, it is not theirs to keep, if I have anything to say about it. Now, uh, Walter takes his fresh... Uh... Uh, sniffed her bourbon there and kicks it back a little bit and uh, says, "You know, I became an attorney to to do good, to help people. Like uh, I don't, I don't like the sneaking around stuff. It's really not me." <laughs> you became an attorney to do good. Yet I hear you work for the city. Well, you you, you got to take pay, you got to take paying jobs, Mister Falstaff. I, 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 
you know, I'd love to work pro bono, but I just don't have the resources to do that. I'm merely jesting with you, friend. Oh, uh, the old adage about the evil politician and all that. Well, it's not that uh, it's not that old, or at least it's <laughs> not not that false. Hmm. All right, Walter gotcha. stands. Up, Walter stands up to like kind of just pace the room a little bit. Okay. Uh, Nicholas, I'm afraid our friend doesn't have a sense of humor of any sort this evening. He seems rather on edge. I said this after Walter after Walter got up and started walking around. Yeah, he's um he's in a he's in a weird place. I mean, I I've seen a lot worse beatings than that, but uh he's taking it he's taking it to heart. Well, I imagine he's not had too terrible many beatings since he became an attorney. Not that I can speak of a fair share of any. I suppose that would set one's mind on edge. Was it men related to you and your firm that knocked him around? Are you uh, and your group? Would I know if my would, would I know if my guys beat him up? Because I don't know how hands on I am. At, <coughs> shush. I don't know how hands on I am at the uh, with uh, the staff at the warehouse. Um. It, uh, you, well, it wouldn't be beyond Stan to do something like that. Um, you know, uh -huh. to, to, his guys are, they're not nice people. So it, it wouldn't be, yeah. um, outside the, the realm of possibility that, uh, somebody whipped okay. him up a little bit. For sure. Like, I don't know, Ralph and Fred were the ones that, that beat him up. Well, surely if we approach the warehouse under your care, we would not come under their ire at all? Oh, no, no, no. Those 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 boys wouldn't uh, give me a sidelong glance if they knew it was good for them. Uh, well, hopefully that will put Walter's mind at ease. It, I, I hope so. I, I, don't, uh, I don't need a, this guy looking like a scared cat walking up to my establishment. Well, in any event, I'm sure I'll strike an imposing figure in my cashmere. <laughs> I've always been a fan of your cashmere, sir. Well, you should be. I consider it costs plenty of money. I consider myself a, a, a bit of a of an upstart in that department. You know, I'm just I'm just trying to break my way into the the more uh, more fashionable sides. You know. But it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's not easy for a for a, for a worker like me to to put that kind of cash into something like that. You should really try being born into money. It certainly helps one acquire a taste for clothing. I'll uh, next time around, I'll uh, put that in. <laughs> Walter uh, Walter's pacing back and forth across the the bar area and you can't make out what he's saying but he's actively kind of talking to himself he's puffing really hard on that cigar and just kind of taking the occasional sip of the bourbon as he walks hey walter take it easy on that uh that stogie i don't need to you you to you to swoon and to hit the hit the deck and keep in I'll mind be just I will be just fine. Thank you, Mr. Gedeke. Tell me not to smoke a cigar. <laughs> Eric, is, uh, is Thomas Rice, that's uh, who Caleb's playing? Uh, no. No? No. no. Um, Caleb is going to be playing... Um, let's see here. My list of... Caleb is going to be playing Connor O'Shaughnessy. He's, uh, he's somebody... I bet he's Irish. Yes, he is. Um, <laughs> and then uh, 
We're also it's like a cop. We're also <laughs> not a cop. Um, it's, <laughs> a, it's also waiting. We're also waiting for Devin, who is going to be playing uh, Pete Spitball Brinkley. So, are now out of game. Are uh-huh. we waiting for any of these guys to show up, or should we just say, "Okay, it's six forty-five. Let's let's roll on down." Um, we don't have to wait. I mean, we can. Uh, that's no. That's not no problem. Um, okay. Because, like I said, you know, as, as things progress, I can. We can just you know, just like we fit Kevin in a, in the middle of the, of a conversation. Yeah. It's just kind of we'll just try oh. to do it as nor- as organically as possible. Um, that being said, I mean, I'm not trying to stall things or anything like that. But is there anything or anywhere else that you guys would want to go before you go to uh, check out this warehouse? Any equipment or things like that you would want to get? I mean, now you're making me look at my character sheet because yep. I know I got my mitts. <laughs> you know, I just don't know if uh, if I need anything else. I got my mitts. <laughs> so is anyone playing Thomas? Got a, or? No, Thomas is an NPC. Okay. Got a heart okay. of gold. That's good. It's important. Is, and is he supposed to be meeting me here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and he was, and he's right about forty-five minutes to an hour late. And Thomas is never late. Okay, it's good to know. As uh, as Walter's pacing back and forth across the bar, uh, suddenly he drops his glass of bourbon, and he looks kind of astonished for a second. And he, the the hand that had the glass in it, he's holding his arm up and he's like turning his hand left and right, and then he suddenly starts like patting down his coat. Um, at this, I will stand and approach Walter calmly and say, Walt. You uh, you all right? What uh, my watch? You got a spasm or something? No, no, my watch, my watch, uh, my watch. Those sons of bitches—they took my watch. All right, all right. Uh, well, if it's um, maybe it's down where you got uh, where you got smacked around. Maybe they uh, maybe oh, they it came off it. in the, in the thrashing. They they have it. You know they have it. You 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 know they took it off. No yet? no. They better have it. Oh. Uh, uh. I, I got I gotta stop smoking the cigar. And and Walter <laughs> walks up to the bar quickly and kind of jams the cigar out. Um. Yeah, Tony's like, uh, you, you're looking a little green uh, about the gills there, uh, Walter. Yeah. I'm, And Walter kind of, he definitely is not one that that drinks and smokes this much very often. Um, proceeds to kind of put a finger up, then put another finger over his lips and kind of make toward the the back door. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> um, up. Luckily, Walter makes it out the back door, and you have a faint. You hear kind of a faint noise of liquid hitting a hard surface. Mm. <laughs> well, believe it or not, that sorry, actually... Mister Fal- <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Mister Falstaff, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to postpone our, our leaving here for a, a minute or two for uh, Walt here to, to to pat his face down. That's fine. I I was still waiting for a friend, although he is considerably late at this point. Believe it or not, despite Walter's theatrics with jabbing out a cigar, it's made me want to light up a pipe for a moment. I think we have the time. <laughs> oh wow! So where would uh? Jeez, oh, I didn't, I didn't notice that at first. <laughs> so where might Thomas Rice be? Where would I begin to look for him if I decided to go looking? Um, well, you could always try um, phoning uh, his house, um, his uh, his sister. Um, actually, um, take that My back. My sister? Your sister. Um, 
you know, if he if he came home, he you know, your sister would he would either be there or your sister would possibly know where he is. Okay. Devin, can you hear us? Devin's on mute. You are on mute, sir. Yeah, I was staying on mute on purpose. Yes, oh, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um so yeah, you you could you could phone his home. Uh beyond that, I mean, he he's a businessman, so it's kind of hard to keep. I mean, he has an office. Um, mm -hmm. So, but he had he had told you earlier that he was going to check out a few things and that he would meet you here. So, those would be the two most logical places to to okay. check. So I'll sit and drink and smoke my pipe for a little bit longer, okay. uh, just to see if he shows up. Yeah, Tony doesn't have a uh, a telephone in the bar, but there is one on the street just outside. Uh, if 15 or 20 minutes go by without him showing up. Uh... And right about that time, uh, you're like, I'm, I'm going to give him about 15 more minutes. Um, the door opens and... Uh, Pete Spitball Brinkley walks through. Ah. -na -na -na. Wrong picture. Uh, delete. There we go. Where is he at? Where are you at, Pete? There he is. Pete. There he is. All right. Uh, Devin will do the spiel with you. Um, I'll put that in as Pete. There we go. All right. Um, you should be able to click on Pete's icon there. And then when you click on it, you should see on your top left corner of your screen, you should see a, a white bar that has bonus roll, penalty roll, and percent roll. Got it. Okay. Um, and on the right, on your settings, my settings, uh, on your right-hand side there, click that. About midway down, you should have an enable 3D dice. And right below that, automatically roll 3D dice. Click both of those. All right. And then now hit the on that bar, hit percent roll and see if make sure that that comes out. There it is. Oh, nine. It was an oh, nine or oh, three. I can't tell. What's the that's a oh, that's nine. An oh, nine. OK, uh, that's a damn good roll. That bodes well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, I think if you check your character sheets, I think all of you know Pete Brinkley. Yes. Yep. Indeed, I do. So, yes, it is no ben. no secret who uh, Pete Brinkley is. Everybody knows who he is. <laughs> so, Pete, you walk in and you see um, you see Walter Pappas. Uh, you see Nick uh, Getty. Actually, you, you don't see Walter. You hear oh, Walter. Yes, you hear Walter. You hear, you hear the uh, distinct sound of Walter vomiting, which you've heard more than once. <laughs> and uh and you also you see Nick Gedicke and you also see uh Charles Falstaff. Mm -hmm. And they're all sitting together and, and as far as you know, they don't you didn't know that they even knew each other. You're kind of like the the linchpin between the, the 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 all the different people. Um and as a matter of fact, uh you came here because, you know, this is where you go after work. Um, you know, um the speakeasy is like your uh, like your cheers, right? And as uh, as usual, uh, right right behind you is uh, Connor O'Shaughnessy, your drinking buddy. Should be easy to find Connor's uh, icon because he's the there. He is. One. There's. There's, there's the sunshine boy. Got in a bit of a Donnybrook on the way over, lads. <laughs> Far for the delay. <laughs> you weren't at work. You were watching Boondock Saints for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a bit of a cartoon with the Young Justice going on, to be exact. Watch your mouth. I had to do some research for my other show. Now did he say, watch your mouth or to wash your mouth? I can never be sure with this guy. 
<laughs> I mean, whichever's better. I don't know. I think he needs a little bit of both, honestly. After I bloody up your teeth, you'll probably have to wash it out. So, yes, Connor and uh, Pete, you walk in. Like I said, you are you you came to tie one on because, you know, hey, it's the end of the day. And uh, you see um, these three guys huddled around a table. Well, I'm sorry, two of these three guys huddled around a table and the telltale sign or sound of Walter barfing uh, out the back door. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, the I'll go. Barf. The um, the bartender. <laughs> Walter, you've gone from a guy who doesn't really drink to the guy who never drinks, <laughs> and we all know it. <laughs> <laughs> never more, quoth the barfer. <laughs> uh, Tony uh, Tony Miller is the bartender, and Tony says, "Ah, uh, oh, now the party's arrived. What are you drinking, boys?" Uh, just, just give me my usual. Right, he says, uh, if you don't got that, give me whatever other says, rot gut you got back there. We got, uh, we got uh, wild turkey coming right up. Yeah, sure. Petey, my boy. Why don't you join us? Yeah, I think I might. And your friend here as well. Which friend is that? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. The two of you came in together. I assumed you knew each other. Did someone come in just before me? No, no. Uh, Connor, uh, Caleb's character came in with you. You guys are well oh. acquainted. Got it. I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Pull up a chair. Pete, Pete doesn't really even know who comes and drinks with him. He just, <laughs> just <laughs> hey, I, I don't know that he much cares so long as there's someone there drinking with him. Not then it's alcoholism. <laughs> Tony, I I don't think I could stomach watching uh, Spitball here drink that same rot gut that he normally does. Keep bringing the good stuff. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Gedeke, sir. Or Mr. Uh, Mr. Falstaff. <laughs> Mr. Falstaff, sir. I, I, I need to stop... Hey, 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 Tommy. Tony, it's not... That, that, that's his bill. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was putting it on the wrong bill. <laughs> yeah, please uh, uh, switch that up. A minute or so later, Walter kind of staggers in from the back. Uh, seeing the group gathered before him, he immediately again tries to kind of straighten his coat and like slick his hair back and kind of <laughs> wipe, the, wipe his mouth gently with his handkerchief. And uh, kind of goes to uh, Tony, uh, just some lime and tonic water, please. Uh, uh, right away, Walter. Uh, oh, hey, uh, here. He hands you his uh, handkerchief. He goes, uh, You got a little, and he kind of points at oh, your oh, tie. Oh, oh. Oh, I get job. some. I get some seltzer for it. Thank you, thank you. All right. So, what's everyone doing here? Seems we're forming a bit of a confederacy this evening. I, I ain't. I ain't looking to fight the North or nothing. In any event, I. <laughs> he, he means. A, he means a small group, Pete. Ah, of course he does. A, a small, tight group, Pete. Uh, Pete. Pete, you wouldn't happen to have heard from uh, Thomas Rice recently, would you? Me? I don't think so. Let me think on it. GM, have I heard from this guy before? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was wondering how that was going to go. <laughs> um, Thomas Rice, you do know the name Thomas Rice. Thomas Rice is a uh, pretty uh, wealthy fella. Um but no, no. Um, what you do know is that uh, um, the events of today was that uh, Sally, your, your, your gal, was supposed to uh, come by here later on uh, in the evening because she was going to uh, she was uh, going to she had some pictures that she was going to take of a, of a job that she um, had taken on. You get you you're a PI, but she does a lot of the the business aspect of it, 
uh, a lot of the actual investigative work to it. Uh, Pete's the kind of a he's kind of a figurehead for the business. Uh, I mean, he's I mean, he's a good he's a good PI, but she's it's like um, she's more driven. Yeah, yeah, but you know, obviously, because uh, of the times, she's not uh, afforded any kind of um, respect in that regard. So she's kind of like the, the the driving force behind everything. So she said, uh, you know, you you just go where you go. I'll, I'll, I'm going to go take some pictures for this job, and then uh, I'll meet you there. So so okay. The reason I would have asked uh, PD that is I had slipped Thomas uh, his name as a potential person to reach out to uh, if he needed a little PI work re in regards to this uh, mysterious box. So Yeah. Um, if, uh, if Thomas Rice came by, you have no idea. Um, very likely Sally may have uh, handled that. So, but, you know, obviously um, it sounds like something that, you know, if, if, if that, ha you know, if, if his name uh, was mentioned, you don't re necessarily remember it. But then again, Sally talks really fast. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't say I remember him coming by. I, I sure haven't spoken with him. Maybe, maybe Sally knows why was he supposed to come by the office? Uh, not specifically. I, I simply mentioned your name to him in passing. He was looking into something for me today. In fact, we were supposed to meet here tonight. I'm getting to the point where I may need to actually speak with my sister to find out if he's been home or if he's still at the office. Thomas is hmm. not an individual to be tardy to any sort of event. If he says he'll be there, he'll be there. So he's late, huh? In, f in so few words, yes. Well, that's not good. I uh, hope Sally's not going to be late. And just as you say that, the door opens and Sally walks in. And uh, she, she's very business smart, um, wearing a, you know, a skirt suit. And she just kind of clomps right up to your table and grabs uh, your shoulder, Pete, and says, uh, um, we need to talk. I would have stood immediately upon seeing a lady enter the room. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. And I... Uh grab my glass and I drink half of it as she's pulling me away. <laughs> There's I put I put Sally on the board there so that everybody can see Sally. Um oh, as, as Sally comes in Walter straightens up a little bit and puffs his chest out slightly. Hello Sally, good to see you. All right, she looks at, she looks right at you and she says uh what happened to you? <laughs> 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 nothing, nothing too on, nothing too ter terrible. The, the the other two gentlemen got it much worse. I assure you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and Walter shoots Nick like just this look of death. <laughs> oh man, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So she pull, uh, Sally pulls you aside, Pete. But I mean, it, she's. She's one of those people that uh, even whispering, she's loud, um, and she's like, uh, "Right." She's like, "Pete, I, I went to uh, that warehouse that Thomas Rice hired us to go and check out, and there's all kinds of weird stuff going on. I, I, I think there's something." She said, "There's, uh, I, I think that uh, there might be something illegal going on at that place." I saw a bunch okay. of, uh, it, it was, it was locked down. Uh, a lot of the workers, they like, they, they, nobody came out. Uh, uh, the, 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 the whistle sounded, you know, you know, the end of the day whistle and I was out, you know, taking pictures and everything and nobody came out. No, nobody left. All right. So, uh, let me get this straight. Thomas Rice hired us to do a job. Yes, Pete. You, <laughs> you did quote him a 50% increase on the rate, right? Pete, let me handle the bu the business aspect of it, okay? Here's your twenty dollars. Oh, she hands you a twenty dollar bill. Here's twenty dollars. Don't blow it tonight. All right. Can I blow half of it tonight? You're gonna spend ten dollars here. <laughs> I, I don't a, know. Maybe a, be a beer costs a nickel. Oh, then maybe <laughs> not. 
<laughs> we're drinking bourbon. That's <laughs> at least a dime. Can I, can I sidle up to uh, both of them? <laughs> no worries, Pete. Uh, Sally, if I may interject. Remember, I had mentioned that you were on my tab this evening. No matter how expensive that gets. As soon as she as soon as you say that, she snatches the twenty dollars out of Pete's hand. <laughs> <laughs> just as I'm I'm like folding the bill to put it in uh, right. the inside pocket of my jacket, it just disappears. Oh, come on, Sal. So what is this job that he hired us to do? Something about the warehouse workers right. going missing, is is that what's going on? No, you're not you're not you're not listening, Pete. There's something there that, uh, that there's been a lot of weird stuff going on at this at this warehouse, right? Uh, if if you would do research like like you're supposed to, you would know these things. But there's been some weird stuff going on at this warehouse. Thomas Rice, uh, Mr. Rice hired us to go and to go and investigate it. Wanted me to take some pictures of the people that work there. I've been there all day. I haven't seen anybody. I I I. I, I Tried getting a little uh, close to the uh, closer to the warehouse, but uh, you know I couldn't see anything. Sally, I didn't, I, I, if, I didn't break in or anything like that. But uh, Sally, I, if, if I may interject, I may be able to provide a bit of clarification on the issue. Uh, it was at my beck and call that Thomas Rice decided to call upon you all. In fact, I have a bit of an idea of what he was interested in within the warehouse. Hmm. I, I suppose my question to you now is, uh, do you know where Thomas may have been going after he spoke with you? He seems to be missing. Oh, uh, no, I, I honestly don't. He left, the, he left the office right about noon, I would say. Uh, said that he had some other business to attend to and that uh, he would uh, talk to me in the morning. When, uh, when, uh, I see. So, um, I don't know. Now, well, time, Pete, it's... time wise, wise, um, that sounds like he, he may have spoken to Sally and or went to uh, Pete's office before he talked to you. Well, Pete, uh, it seems fortune may be smiling on me, actually. Uh, my group of three, the three of us were intending upon going to the very warehouse this evening. The item that Thomas is interested in is a crate that used to belong to my brother Billy. And we were going to investigate it and see if we could procure the crate in order for it not to fall into other people's hands. So it was stolen from your brother? Is that what you're saying? Not in so many words. Uh, merely a misunderstanding of the crate being delivered to the location my brother wished it to be delivered to, and the location happens to be owned by another party at this point. However, that crate right. is still the property of the Falstaffs. Oh, good. I was afraid we were going to have to do something illegal. Yeah, Heaven uh, forbid. Sally says, uh, um, excuse me, Mr. Falstaff, but you're, uh, you're not telling the whole story there. You know... Uh, that 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 warehouse was also used by the Hogan gang uh, to 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 run liquor out of. If if that is the case, I certainly knew nothing of the sort, or at least not until they were routed from that place. We would never allow one of our own facilities to be an operation for. I kind of say it quietly, bootlegging operations. Well, why not? <laughs> you don't seem to have too much of a problem with it. Ah, well, my own simple pleasures are my are are something else entirely. To have the entire family name wrapped up in something such as that, well, would be a different story. But that is none of your concern, Petey, my boy. Seems that you've already been bought for this little operation. Perhaps you'd like to tag along. Sure. Just uh, let me finish my drink. Sally, I'm sure we can come to an arrangement on the price of Pete's extra involvement. 
All right. She says, uh, "Well, honestly, uh, Mr. Falstaff, uh, you've already you, you've already paid in. Uh, Mr. Rice has already paid in full. So, uh, uh, the, I would consider this part of the job." No, nah, how fortuitous. She says, "Pete, I'll uh, I'll leave you to it and uh, go and um, see if I find anything on these pictures." Do you need anything from the office? Um. Yeah. Why don't you run me out my flask? All right. She just turns around and walks off real fast. <laughs> Walter, Come on, Walter, Sal. Don't be like that. Walter quickly puts his hand up and is like, "Have a good night, Sally." All right. She she just kind of uh, humps and slams the door behind her. Bye, Sally. I love that flask. It was a gift. <laughs> you know you're a lucky guy, Pete. Yeah. Some days I agree. Some days not so much. Uh, guys, away. can I take a? I just got to step away for like five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Less than that. I'll be right back. <clears throat> so, get it. Uh, Nick Gedicky goes to the can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Pete, she's uh, she's. She's quite a peach. She's smart as a whip, and man, she's got some gams. Well, you got that right. So, in the big picture here, what exactly are we uh, working on, case-wise? <laughs> yeah, you got to remember those guys. These guys just walked in cold, so you got you got to fill them in on what's going on. I, I kind of, at this point, I kind of like blink in surprise because I kind of forgot that Connor was there. <laughs> yeah, Con Connor walked in, uh, basically was given a drink, and then all this conversation started happening. So he just kicked back in a chair and was, th and drinking, <laughs> just waiting to get involved. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Uh, Charles, Charles Falstaff. Connor O'Shaughnessy. Pleased to meet you. Ah, and, and you as well. So, you uh, know my friend Pete here, it seems. Oh, yeah, Pete's a, Pete's a good fella. He said in a completely different accent. <laughs> <laughs> as he drinks, he just keeps getting more and more. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sign of my alcoholism. I just keep changing what accent I use. <laughs> Well, you know, peach a good fella. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought Sal was the peach. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Connor. He uh he's kind of a good for nothing most times, but uh other times he's got uh got good info on what's going on in the streets. So yeah, I keep him around. I know a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I see what I see. Well, then perhaps so wait, are we doing accent a... or no accent? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably just going to do no accent because I'm going to keep dropping it and it's going to piss me off. So <laughs> I'm just going to stick to no accent. <laughs> perhaps so, you could be of use to us this evening then uh, if you'd be so interested in helping out our little cause. Well, if there's some coin in it, I think I uh, I could be persuaded to stick around, or at the very least, if well, the drinks keep flowing. Well, you, you guys, you guys, this shouldn't be that hard. I mean, we've got Mr. Gedeke. It's his warehouse, or his brother's warehouse, anyway. He should be able to get us in with no problem. Uh, he well, said he knows where the crate is. This this should be this should be easy peasy. Walter, I I don't know how to go about saying this, but. Sally's words bring a slight alarm to me. I uh, wish words were the mentioned... hello or the goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> very well, Walter. Very well. <laughs> Some of the things she mentioned about the oddities surrounding the warehouse have brought me a little concern. Some of the things my brother delved in had a tendency to. Well, uh, go go a little haphazard. So, the fact that you were smacked around brings me a bit of unease, and I certainly can't see 
the problem with having a few more people around to sort of ease our transition into procuring the crate. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Falstaff. That wasn't me saying that I think that we shouldn't include these these gentlemen. Pete, Pete's great. I, I know Pete from – Pete and I go way back. Uh, honestly, Pete stopped me from getting most of the beings I probably would have got as a kid. Uh, but uh, – no, I don't know Connor uh, that well. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the group of us together, this should – this should not be that. It should be a walk in the park. We, we got we we know the guy that owns the warehouse, and it's it's your crate, right? Indeed. So so I mean so this shouldn't we shouldn't have too much of a problem. I completely agree. And once Nicholas returns from returns from his respite, I say we finish our drinks and head out into the night. Well, if we're heading out for a job, I think maybe we need to uh, stop drinking. And he finishes his drink. <laughs> I personally wouldn't mind making a, f a quick phone call if you men would indulge me. Certainly. I believe the phone is out front, Mr. Falstaff. Indeed it is. And I stand up and make my way out front. Okay. Uh, I kind of... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, uh, you step out, it's... Uh... It's March, uh, St. Louis, so we're talking cold rain. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it looks like the weather's starting to turn a little bit, uh, a little bit south. So before I go out, I'll grab my overcoat, turn up the collar, put on my uh, weather hat, whatever version of hat I'm wearing at the time, and I'll uh, find my way to the phone booth. Okay. Yeah, it's it's right out front. Um, old style, you know. Obviously, the uh, the big heavy door that closes you in, so it's almost like hermetically sealed. <laughs> and I will uh, plunk a coin in, and I'll dial my sister. Okay. All right. Um, or I'll ring her through the operator if that's how that worked at the time. Yep. Actually, that's exactly how that would work. Uh, it would be like uh, plinth one four two, so um, yeah. Uh, phone rings and your sister answers. Actually, uh, her servant answers. Um, Rice household. Ah uh, yes, uh, this is Charles Falstaff. I, I'm calling on my sister. Oh, uh, one second, sir. Then, just moments later, your sister gets on. She says, "Charlie." Yes, it's Elsa, correct? Yes. Yes, Elsa. Uh, this is this is Charles. I was calling in regards to Thomas. I was supposed to meet with him this evening, and, well, he's yet to make his call upon me. That's odd. He, uh, uh, he said he was going to be with you. Said you had Did some he... business to attend to. Did he stop by your by his your house before he left this evening? Uh, I haven't seen him since he left this morning. Oh, I see. Uh, perhaps I should ring the business. Uh, nothing to worry about, my dear. I'm sure he's just uh, held up somewhere. Are, are you sure? Uh, please, Elsa. Uh, have no worries. Uh, now, now, Charlie. Now you've got me worried. Well, that was certainly not my intention. Perhaps I should have perhaps just spoken to this. Perhaps you should have thought of that before calling me at, at this late hour and tell me my husband is possibly missing. I did not say he was possibly missing. I'm simply trying to find the man. Now, honestly, Elsa. Right, she says, you call, um, you call as soon as you find out. I'm going to call his office right now. And she hangs up. I'll kind of hang up the phone. Well... That could have certainly gone better. And uh, I will think about calling the office, but upon realizing that Elsa would be doing the same, I decide to head back to the speakeasy. Okay. All right. And so then you see Charles walking back in, looking rather flustered. Um, 
All finished then, Charles? I suppose so. I'll tell you what, gentlemen, never ruffle the feathers of never ruffle the feathers of a woman whose husband is missing. That seems like sound advice. Yes, I'm afraid I've done no more than worry my sister this evening. Thomas certainly wasn't at home. I should have expected as much. I could have told you that much, Chuck. Well, thank you for your help, Petey. Uh, Tony says, uh, is there anything I can get you guys before you go? Um, you want me to call you a cab? Uh, no, How no, close no is thanks. The how close is the warehouse? Uh, it's on Arsenal, so, and you're down, uh, you're, yeah, uh, it's about, like I said, it's like 10, 12 blocks, something like that. But, I mean, they're big blocks. It's not like it, it's down over yeah. by the river. Yes, Does any of us have a vehicle? Probably not. Who? I'm sorry? Do any of us have a vehicle? Um, I think one of you may. I would I think potentially Nick, I think Nick a driver. Had, I yeah. think Nick had a vehicle. I um I think so. Um I know that Charles does. Let me look at Nick. Nicholas doesn't see. I think I would probably have a driver before I'd have a vehicle. Uh yeah. wait, my my sheet says milk truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's rather odd. Let's take the milk truck. <laughs> That's weird. Why would a lawyer have a milk truck? <laughs> I have You're a moonlighting lighting to make the phantom make ends meet. <laughs> I'm a shitty lawyer. <laughs> That's right. Delivers milk in the mornings and then uh, uh, law at night. Uh, yes, uh, Charles has a car, but did you did you bring it here? No. Oh. I there's no reason for me to drive the Rolls Royce and. March. All right, Tony. Yeah, call us a cab. In this neighborhood. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, for those who came on later, this is this is a speakeasy that is uh, frequented by um, a lot of uh, faculty and um, intelligentsia from St. Louis University. It's actually not very far from it. Um, so it's not a not necessarily a bad area. It's uh, a predominantly German area, but it's not uh, it's not like uh, crime ridden or anything like that. It's more of a middle class. Um, but this is more of a Model T area, not a Rolls Royce area. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, Rolls <laughs> Royce would kind of attract some attention. All right, yeah, so I'm not gonna... go ahead. Uh, so, uh, Tony just he, he excuses himself. He goes out to or uh, call you guys a cab. Uh, he, he leaves the door cracked a little bit so that way you can hear the horn when he pulls up. All right. Uh, do we are we wanting to wait for Matthew, or are we going to move on and have him just kind of? Uh, you know, would this be an okay time to take like a, a bio break? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Um, if anybody wants to right talk about uh, the game system and things like that, we can do that while we're taking a quick quick break. Um, how many have you guys played uh, Call of Cthulhu before? I have. Okay. I love Call of Cthulhu Seven. It's fantastic. Uh, it, it it is because uh, I I I ran six and um, I thought well you know the the difference between six and seven can't be that much but man it is it's it's totally different. Mm -hmm. And the stuff they put into it works so well. Yeah, um, I love it. I I like the concept of the bonus and uh, penalty die because uh, mm -hmm. I, I I like the the uh, advantage disadvantage of D and D fifth edition. So adding that uh, that mechanic to this was uh, it. It was very, I don't know. The way it, it does it kind of reminds me of that because you're taking the better of the two or the worse of the two. Yeah. Um, and it's it. It just seems so natural. I'm wondering why this. Uh, as far as I know, it's not been done in a lot of games before that, and it seems just strange to me that it's just now becoming kind of in vogue. Yeah, I I don't, I don't know. Why? But I'm I'm certainly glad to see it. I I really like the pushed rolls, yeah, um, yeah, mechanic as well. Wait, what's that? I'm a little bit behind on the um, amounts of this one. When you make a roll outside mm -hmm. of combat or counted time or anything, you can push the roll. If you fail it, which means that you can try again. 
Oh. But if you fail on the try again, then you get essentially a dramatic failure because oh, cool. you tried to get it done when the risk was greater. Yeah. Okay. Right. And and as a game master, you would, uh, you know, let's say you make your role, you fail, you go, I want to just, I'm, I'm going to push it. And and the game master would say, okay, how are you pushing it? You know, like mm -hmm. the example they give in the, in the book is, you know, you're trying to open a door and it's stuck and you can't get it. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to try again. I'm going to push it. Okay. How are you doing? I'm going to just, I'm going to throw my body into it with no regard to my own safety. Okay. That, that sounds about right. And then if you fail, then you have this negative consequence. So you're, you're almost uh kind of using an aspect but you're kind of making up in the spot but you're also kind of defining the potential failure as you as you take the risk right and a game as a game master you can you, you go off of what they say i'm going to go i'm going to do this with no regard to my my own safety and then the game master would then say okay the 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 risk is if you fail this, this will happen. So it's open. You know, it, it's in the open. They don't. They don't sure. keep it from you. They say, if you fail this, then when you go through, if there's somebody on that side, you're going to fall down on your face, and they're going to be standing over you. you know, right, right, right. If you fail this, they will come. <laughs> so I went away for five minutes. We lost two guys, and now we're doing Cthulhu porno. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Um, no, he already ruled out Cthulhu porno. I asked him before. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, that was in the chat. I said, uh, yeah, the uh, he asked what uh, what rating system are we going for here? I said rated R because uh, triple X. I don't have the the icons for that. So. <laughs> it's just a Google search, right? <laughs> well, I suppose it could be. <laughs> just make sure. But then you, you gotta go through make the sure trouble you're incognito. of importing it all. Right. <laughs> what you're not always an incognito i thought that's just default <clears throat> yeah my wife's like uh why was the incognito tab up i'm like because that's the way you're supposed to search the internet she, she just assumes i'm doing bad stuff <laughs> <laughs> hey, little column a little column b. yeah exactly a little column a little column b All right, everybody is back. So uh, the cab, you hear Auga from the uh, the cab outside. That was that was fantastic sound effects. <laughs> is that, was that no sound expense. effect from right. Roll Twenty? It was pretty legit. <laughs> no, that was that was actually Battle Bards. Yes, <laughs> it's Battle Bards. <laughs> All right, so, uh, right, the uh, cabbie says, uh, you know, you tell him where you're going. He says, ah, our, get a key warehouse. Uh, drop us off around the block. Will do, will do. All right, let me do a little. There we go. We can all fit in a cab, in a singular cab. Uh, it's a uh, uh, big cab. Big cab. Yeah, it's one of those, uh, it's like a paddy wagon. Okay, that's fine. I'm just milk milk truck. Is it a milk truck cab? It's a milk truck, right? <laughs> milk truck. Cab. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking about the cabs I've been in, and I'm like, oh, some of them, but I don't know if that worked out back then. But whatever. They they know to bring the big cabs to the speakeasy. That's right, because you got to carry multiple people. <laughs> oh, okay. People. Uh, the, the Giant Uber yellow cab, cabs, what, suicide doors. That's right. Yeah, your cab. Uh, <clears throat> you see the cab driver's name is Uber. <laughs> oh, perfect. Uber Lyft. Yes. We're obviously in Germantown. That's right. Uh, so yes, um, he takes you just to the end of the block, and uh, from your vantage point, you can see the fenced-in uh, yard of this uh, of this warehouse, which is now on display on your screen there. Um, the uh, uh, question for you, Eric, real quick here. Mm -hmm. um, one of the pieces of information you put on my character sheet there about. Walter Pappas. Yep. Is that something that is known? Uh, since I came late to the conversation, has that been talked about or anything? Uh, let's see here. Which part are we talking about here? <laughs> I don't know. I'm being vague because I don't know if that's important or not. <laughs> well, great RP ears. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Secrets are my friend. Yeah, at least it's too blurry on Eric's screen. For secrets me to don't read. stay buried. <laughs> secrets, secrets are no fun. <laughs> Unless uh, they're shared with everyone and we can all have a great time. Let's see. 
That's not what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, <laughs> peppers. Walter Pappas. Yes? You are so um, weird. Walter you, Pappas, that's wa me. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, Connor, um, you, all, all, that, uh, all that you really know about, <laughs> about this is that, <laughs> is that uh, Walter doesn't seem to recognize you at all. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, so um, as as we're we're walking, uh, we're, we're like a block away from from the warehouse, right? Correct. Okay. So as we're walking, I want to, um, I want to uh, like maybe kind of nudge Pete real by the shoulder, and kind of have him hang back a little bit, like just drop his pace a little bit. Uh, Pete looks over at you and then slows down a little bit let everyone get a bit of a, a lead on us yeah Connor what's up so uh, Walter Walter acting a little weird tonight uh, I don't know no more weirder than usual I think hmm. why you getting a different feel hmm. from him I might have, might have seen something uh, something weird earlier, and it seems to be a little bit of a, a weird situation that Walter's here right now. Uh, spit it out. Don't uh, beat around the bush. Uh, well, I was looking around the warehouse earlier, and and something got thrown in the trash can. Into the dumpster. Okay. <laughs> Did you see what it was? Uh, and and I just I kind of point with my chin at, at Walter. He got thrown into the dumpster. I I I don't believe it, but I think so. Huh, well, uh, I've known him to get into fights, but uh, at this warehouse we're going to? That is correct, right, Eric? Yes, yes. Yes, then yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. And as I'm trying to explain this, it, it's just kind of not making sense to me. So as I'm trying to say it out loud, it's like I'm just stumbling over my words because it just does not make sense. Uh, Pete quickens his pace a little bit. Okay. And uh, he's walking a little bit, almost jogging, uh, his uh, uh, roughed up nice shoes are uh, crunching on the, on the sidewalk. Hey, Wally, hold up. This, so this is the Walter first time his pace. I'm even aware of anything because I've just been huddled against the cold wondering why we couldn't just drop off at the, sh the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 Pete, what, what do you need? Uh, so, uh, what, what's going on with you today? Oh, well, uh, well I mean, aside from getting, uh, getting manhandled a little bit by the guys at this warehouse earlier, uh, not, not much, I guess. It was a regular day for the most part. I had breakfast. Yeah, so, talked to a couple clients at the firm, and then uh, I got sent out on this errand. So you were here today earlier. Yeah, I was. Uh, well, and uh, and <laughs> Walter kind of takes Pete's arm and pulls him aside a little bit. Look, uh, just keep this under your hat. But the the mayor asked me to come and try and find this package here. Apparently, there's. Possibly something. I don't, I, I'm going to assume illegal or, or something illicit in it. And the mayor's got a bit of a stake in this warehouse. Uh, if a raid happens, the mayor doesn't want to be associated with it. So I, I, he sent me down here to to investigate. I don't know why he chose me, but you know, when when the mayor's office sends you somewhere, you you go. 
So, uh, so you're you're looking for this crate too? Yeah, I, I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to find the crate at least. You know, find out kind of what's what's in it, what it's about, and if we can get rid of it, get rid of it. I, I, the mayor doesn't want it at the warehouse. What does the mayor think it is? I didn't. I didn't. He didn't tell me. I didn't actually get to speak to the mayor. I got a. I, I got a letter. Uh, uh, well, I guess I got a. I got a. I got a mimeograph of a letter. It's. I don't have the original letter. It's not actually signed by the mayor. It's just. It's. A, it's a copy of the letter. But it, it, regardless, it, it says that the. I'm. There's something here. They want to kind of get rid of. Um, yeah. Man, you just. Uh, uh, never mind. You know, Pete. Never mind. I, yeah, I, I try to stay on the straight and narrow, man. You know, you know, you know that means a lot to me. But and it meant a lot to my grandfather. It meant a lot to my dad. It means a lot to me. But I can't. I gotta. I, I have to do what they tell me to do. It's it's my job. It's 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 what they're asking. Of. <clears throat> man, you. N never mind. Never mind. He uh, pats you on the shoulder. Thanks. Thanks, Wally. Uh, and then he'll just walk up with the rest of them and catch up. Um, I, I kind of imagine that everyone kind of stops at the corner when they can see the building yep. and just stands there yep. wondering what we're doing. So what's the building look like? Um, yeah, if you look at uh, your screen there, it um, it's pretty much just a, it's a you know, rectangular building. It's inside a fenced-in area, uh, and there's doors on um on the, the street side but then all it looks like the deliveries are all done uh like there's a dock on the like the north end uh, as a matter of fact as you guys are approaching i can switch things over uh, to there there we go oh. hmm, some sound effects going on yep it's raining all right, so as um, if you can minim or uh, you can make that a little bit smaller, you can kind of see the whole building there. Uh, you should uh, now. I see different. I see things differently than you guys do. Um, so we shouldn't look at your window. Right. Don't, don't, do not. Yeah. Do not peer behind the curtain. Uh, um, uh, I'll uh, I'll de-click that. <laughs> um. But yeah, what uh, what you guys should should be seeing it should be all dark, uh, except for where you can see the doors, and then there is a, a vehicle sitting there. Um, but at, you guys are all collected there on the screen, but you're actually just li like at the fence line, just beyond the uh, the grid there. Uh, does the fence have an opening? It does. It does. Actually, as a matter of fact, there it's not a real good fence. It's been, it looks like that's one of the last things that. Uh, the Getty keys are planning on fixing is the actual fence. So there's there's gaps. Listen, we got a lot of problems. Okay, I don't need uh, I don't need to look. <laughs> Where was that dumpster I was looking at earlier? Uh, that was just outside the uh, just outside the fence. So it would be right near the uh, the fit the gate of the fence. I, I, I want to go meander over there. Okay. All right. So. Okay, so Connor's going over to the dumpster in the corner there. Um, the rest of you are kind of lined up. Along the and fence. we can see this running car that's sitting there. Yeah, you can clearly see the running car. It's you know the exhaust is uh, you know it's cold enough that you can see the exhaust. Um, it's. Yeah, it's just it's just sitting there. Uh, from your vantage point, it's not real easy to see the tags. Uh, you'd have to get a little bit closer to see that. Is there a driver in it? Uh, doesn't appear to be. Nicholas, do you recognize that vehicle? Great question. Uh, Eric, do I recognize that vehicle? Yeah. You've never seen that before, no. That, I'm gonna uh, jog. I, I suppose at some point we need to make our way inside. Hmm. Pete, how do you typically steal yourself? Uh, 
something like this. Well, I don't plan on stealing anything. And then I jog in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna note that that doesn't look like Stan's Stan's car or or, um, or anyone's car. That <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's uh, it, it's way too of. utilitarian for Stan. Stan is Stan. He he likes nice things. He likes nice. He he likes his. Um, he likes his fast cars and his fast women. Stan drives a Honda Civic CI. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Connor, you go to the uh, dumpster to check it out. And um, yeah, you you open it up and it looks exactly as it did the last time you saw it. Uh, Sans uh, Walter laying inside. Oh, see, I thought this game was about to get real when you were like, it looks exactly the same with Walter inside. I was going to be like, what? Sanity. Damn. Oh, Missed opportunity. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, is, did it, does it look like... I mean, is there is there blood? Is there evidence? Does it look like someone crawled out of it? Uh, as yes, it looks exactly like it. It looks like someone had uh, has been laying in there because it's smooshed down. And yes, there's some smears of of, of blood. You see, uh, um, very obviously, somebody had was in it and got out. Mm. Is there a glint of gold in the dumpster? You could search the dumpster if you want. I, well, I would I, like to search the dumpster. <laughs> I, 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 so I want to just clarify here. So just to be sure I'm getting this right. So they beat the shit out of Walter, left him the dumpster. Someone found Walter. So supposedly, you know, and told him he had been unconscious for. Yeah. The paramedics told him he was unconscious for a long period of time. Yeah. The. Walter, you have no real recollection of any of this, um, okay. and what uh, what had happened was um, yes, the uh, so rescue team came to find at to a, an anonymous call saying that you know there's this man laying in a in a ditch, um, but yeah, whenever they showed up, they you were just laying in a ditch. You weren't, you okay. weren't so somebody had pulled you out of a dumpster, and then called called ems and someone someone pulled me out or i got up and walked out I, either way i have no idea right you I have no recollection of it at all all you know is uh you know you you came up to the to the warehouse and you were poking around and all of a sudden you know it's like a, a bright flash and somebody like cracked you on the back of the head and that was about it okay so connor is searching the dumpster yes yes Okay, uh, so yeah, as you guys are standing there, you're looking at the vehicle, you're looking at the thing, and you hear uh, a uh, the the sound of somebody dump dumpster diving, and uh, yes, Connor is now you know feet out, like digging <laughs> digging through this dumpster. Uh, he upset a nearby dog. <laughs> Pete, hold on a moment. Stopping Pete from running inside the warehouse. Until <laughs> well, I wasn't. Was. I was going to run up to the car and take a look inside the car and see if there are any cases of booze or something. Because looks like bootleggers. Okay. Uh, on, my man. What in the world are you doing? I'm just taking a look. Whatever for. Curiosity. All right, uh, Connor. As you're digging around, you uh, you're hand hits something that's uh, something metallic because it's mostly just papers and, and stuff like that and, and trash in this but uh, yeah something metallic you pull uh, pull out a gold watch hmm. uh, like a like a pocket watch or a wrist watch uh, pocket watch pocket watch no, actually, it needs to be a wristwatch because I the Walter was looking at his wrist earlier. So correct, wristwatch. Is it an Irish wristwatch? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will. And it's it's raining and it's kind of nighttime, right? Uh, yes. Are there street lamps around where we are? 
Uh, yes, they're around are. the building. There okay, are. so I, I'll head over to one of the street lamps, one of the little pools of light around it, and take a look at this watch. Kind of brush it off on my coat, lap, coat of my uh, lapel of my coat, and turn it over. Try to look at it. Try to see if I can figure out what it is, or if there's any markings on it, or anything like that. Okay. Uh, Pete is moving towards the car. Uh, Walter, you're just kind of watching what's going on, and yeah, you, you clearly see what Connor's doing. Um, uh, Charles and Nicholas, what are you guys doing? Oh, Nicholas? I'm just kind of standing there a little bit baffled. I <laughs> Someone just dug I think through I'm, the trash can. I think I'm trying to puzzle whose, uh, whose car this might be. Okay. All right. All right. Um... Connor, Connor, what do you what do you what do you have there? Uh, I, don't, I don't know yet. Something something caught my eye in that trash can over there. I was trying to see what it is in the light. Walter like kind of squints. He doesn't approach Connor, but he's kind of like looking to see if he can make out what's in Connor's hand. Uh, that if you we want to boil it down to a roll. Sure. I'm, I'm not trying to hide it. I just, okay. I have, I'm just turning it over, like back and forth in my hand, trying but, I mean, to look at it in the light. It's right. dark. You're under a street light. I mean, you know, it's. I'm not standing right next to you. Right, right, right. So let's. <clears throat> what kind of roll are we gonna make? He's not really hiding it, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's a spot hidden. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a D100 roll. <laughs> fairly, fairly, <laughs> fairly positive. Yes. Um, let's do a. Let's do a. Idea roll, which is intelligence. Get an idea, maybe, maybe, seeing what it is. All right, let's see if this works. All right. So I said it was a straight up roll. So if you look at your good lord, uh, apparently uh, Walter's uh, he's got he's got some serious intelligence. Um, so I am an accountant. Yes, seventy seven is below your intelligence. So you have. A, uh, you you get a glimpse of what it is. You see that he's he clear. You clearly see uh, a glint of of gold flash as he's turning it in his hand, and just the way he's holding it, the way he's kind of yeah, it's a watch. Hey hey, Connor and Walter actually starts kind of aggressively walking at Connor. Uh yeah, so I'm, I think I might take a step back and square up my shoulders for a fight. I don't know what's going on right now. Okay. Yeah, well, Walter's kind of a squirrely little guy, and Connor's a uh, pretty big... I think he's pretty big, isn't he? What was his size? Um, S size 75. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. It feels big. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Connor's kind of a big dude. So My size. Yeah, so I would, I would take a... Take a little bit of a step back, square up my shoulders, not cock back my fist to punch him, but this little dude is running at me. What, what the hell? <laughs> uh, Walter Walter kind of tromps up on you pretty quickly and uh, sees the watch in your hand. And actually, you like, and he's like, give me that. And he, hey, Walter goes to snatch the watch out of your hand. Uh, on instinct, I would pull my hand away so you don't grab it out of my hand. <laughs> Where did you get that? It was in the it was in the dumpster over there. It was in the trash can. The dumpster? That's that's my watch. I don't. I, I didn't see it on your wrist. I saw it in the trash can. Look, that's my watch. Look at the back of the watch. It's got my grandfather's name on it. I'll flip it over. Yeah, it has. Uh, I don't think Leo we, Pappas. Leo, yeah. So it's uh, it says Leo Pappas on there, but it's really really worn down. So it it could say Leo Pappas. It could say you know, 
Uh, Leonidas. Lionel Richie. <laughs> Lionel Richie. <laughs> <they> all <laughs> <laughs> this watch is telling the future. <laughs> I know, yeah, I guess it kind of says that. All right. So. I've been missing the watch since I got beat up here. All right. So maybe may, let, let's let's think of this as a flashback for a moment then. So when I think back to what I saw when I was casing the warehouse, I, I saw the uh, the goons throw this hump this hunk into the 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 dumpster. Did did I go over and check it out? Did I see what was going on, or did I just observe this from across the street? Uh, well, you really had no dog in that fight, so I mean, I wouldn't have gotten involved. No, probably not. Yeah, that makes sense. But I I could see it enough to recognize that. Walter did get it, the, it's the guy standing in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would I have been able to see anything from that to kind of gauge how, what condition he was in, how badly he was beat up? Um, I mean, if I'm a brawler, if I'm, I, I would have been in fights. I probably maybe would have been able to. Yeah, this guy, the the guy they drug they drug into the you know across the. Um, across the parking lot, he wasn't hamburger. He was, you know, he, he, he really didn't look that bad. You've hmm. seen, you've seen way worse. You, as a matter of fact, uh, just from your vantage point and maybe your initial reaction or initial like uh, gut instinct was that um, it was very likely that dude just passed out. Hmm. It, it was like he was dra they were dragging out a drunk. Hmm. I, I didn't think he was dying, did I? No. no. All right. Okay, so <laughs> cutting back to reality from that wonderful, informative flashback. That was just pure exposition. <laughs> all right, all right. Calm down, calm down. Here you go, here you go. Jesus. So and, and Walter <laughs> kind of snatches it back, and, he, and he, he latches it around his wrist, and he kind of just puts his, his hand on it. And he looks up at, at Connor and says, look, look, I'm sorry. This is just this has been this has been a day and the watch means a lot to me. I I apologize. Hey, hey, I get it. I get it. We all have family heirlooms, but uh what were you doing in there? I mean I I, 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 I have I have no idea. And and at that kind of Walter looks over and kind of just quickly saunters over to peer over into the dumpster. Okay. Um, and I assume I see like the same kind of blood stain, like little yeah. blood trails and stuff. Correct. The hell was I doing in here? I mean, they pulled you. I, I saw them drag you out of the warehouse, like you were passed out. Well, I mean, they did a number on me. I mean, that's. I mean, they they took me to the they took me to the mattress for sure. Like I was. Mm. Well, there's only it was a couple guys, but I mean, if you get your clock clean hard enough, you don't remember for yeah, a while. Yeah, so I, I guess they definitely rung my bell. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we just got to figure out what's going on. Maybe if we yeah, can get yeah. back in there, we'll find some more answers. So it looks like Pete's going to the car. Let's go. Let's yeah. see what he's doing there. Yeah, right. Pete, you are at the car. Um, now that you're that close, you can certainly tell. Um, details of it. it it is in fact running um which you already knew there is no one inside okay uh i walk up to it um i've got my louisville slugger in my left hand okay uh and i'm going to get up close to the windows and uh peer in to the back of the vehicle the back seat the front seats see if there are any cases of um liquor or anything like i would expect if this is a bootlegger and this is obviously a vehicle that is either a getaway vehicle or it's a vehicle that's prepped to make some kind of run for something so either they're moving booze or i think that they might be moving this crate that we're here to get okay uh looking inside there are no crates or or uh <laughs> any uh like boxes for like alcohol or anything like that uh the only thing that uh, of note that you do see is uh on the floorboard in the back seat uh behind the the passenger side uh you see an attache case or a, 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 a briefcase of some sort uh i'll 
I'll open one of the doors and reach back there and grab it. Okay. Uh, it, it is not locked, so you you ha- now have a briefcase. Uh, I'll look at everyone else and kind of shrug and then put it on the hood and open it up. Okay. Um, my, my rain sound effects is... Uh, Oh, it's, is this truly what we need to be doing right now? Going through someone else's things? Well, Sal said that uh, people have been coming into this warehouse and not leaving. And now we got a car sitting here. Uh, so maybe this person went inside and didn't come back out. And, you know, this might help us figure out their identity. You know, who they are, what they're here for. Maybe do they have a reason to not come out? If not then maybe something bad's going on on the inside, you know? I suppose you know better than I do the steps to take in a situation like this, but for the life of me, I don't know why we don't just waltz in and demand that crate. All right, so well, is anybody the, the giving door I went in, The door I went in is right over there. It looks like it's still open a bit. Ah, uh, yes, well, I do think we should all proceed together, of course. Uh, Pete, the... Uh the briefcase is it has a uh, looks like it has a, a locking mechanism to it uh, but it doesn't look like it's really sound uh, it could probably easily be jimmied okay uh, then I will do that okay then let's do a locksmith roll but I will give you a bonus dice to that okay uh, knowing that I'm no good at locksmithing, could I just hit it with my bat? Oh, you just want to break it open? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, the, then... <laughs> yeah, then, I mean... Yeah, if the, you want to, like, get rid of all pretense of uh, trying to just, like, like, you know, finesse it open, you just want to smash it, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Pete's very... M- very much of a finesse person. <laughs> okay. Uh, then, yeah, it, it's very, very easily, you don't even have to roll. It's just very easily just, you just kind of turn it on its side and crack, and papers start to fall out. Uh, he, he picks up the case and, and looks at the small scratches or dent he made in the hood and kind of grimaces at the others um, as he bends down and picks up all the papers that have started to flutter everywhere. Okay. Flipping uh, through them quickly. All right, so you start looking through those. What's uh, everybody else doing at this point? I'm interested in what's going on, so I'll be checking it out. I'll also be just, in general, looking around, okay, making sure no one's sneaking up on us, trying to keep an eye on the situation. Walter okay. will uh, will kind of lean near Pete to kind of look over his shoulder and see what kind of paperwork he's looking at. Uh, you know, Paperwork is something that interests Walter greatly. Okay, you uh, you should be able to move your icons uh, wherever you want to. So uh, feel free to do so at any time. Uh, once we turn, if we go into like a turn-based thing, then obviously you would have to wait. But um, yeah, as of right now, you can put your guys where you wherever you want to. You should be able to. If you can't, let me know. Oh, cool. I think Nick is gonna kind of look on <laughs> incredulously because he doesn't know whose car this is, but at the same time. It could be someone he knows, and the fact that Pete just went in the back and kind of ripped out the thing and then broke open the, the briefcase is kind of just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> also, he's, you know, Nick's drank at least a, a third of a bottle of bourbon at this point, so. Right. Okay. Everything's crazy. Uh, Walter, as you close in, um, t- towards you're looking over what uh, Pete's looking at, the one thing that you do notice that maybe the others don't really um, pay attention to is the vehicle has tags, yeah. and uh, they they are municipal tags. What the? Hey, 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 guys! This this is a city vehicle. This is somebody from one of the municipal <clears throat> offices. You think the mayor came down here? I can't believe it. He would never come down here himself. What What are these papers we're looking at? All right. The, uh, the, it's a bunch of... Um, uh, looks like official documents, um, government uh, notices, things like that. It, it, to Pete, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 
but it's from different uh, different municipal offices, uh, a couple of federal agencies. Uh, I'll hand them off to Walter, uh, since he's our lawyer and probably the most versed in legal documents of any kind. Uh, I'll say, uh, what what do you make of these, Wally? Well, let me take a look here. Let me take a look. And uh, like he, Walter kind of straightens his back a little bit and kind of holds them up to the light as best he can. In fact, Walter probably would walk around to the front of the car and, and hold the papers up to the light of the headlights. Okay. Okay. Very easily you can tell that um, most of these are addressed or um, from the office of let's see here it is uh, the office of the revenue service oh boy is it in regards to a possible raid or a tax that, issue that, that I know about? It, it looks like that it is a official uh, notification of of uh, it's a warrant to search the premises. Oh boy, uh, Nick! Nick, you you're gonna want to see this. Okay, Nick stepped away. So oh, that's right. He had to go. He's he's over by the dumpster relieving himself. <laughs> <laughs> We're all really interested in that dumpster. <laughs> so what? Uh, what do we got, Wally? Well, it's a warrant for to search the building. Um, it's from the it's from the Internal Revenue Service. Well, why is it out here if the inspector is in there? That doesn't make any sense. I, 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 this is something you typically have to present to somebody in the building. So I don't know why I'd be here in a briefcase. Uh, Pete's going to take it and then kind of uh, smile and look uh, sidelong at Wally. Well, this gives us the perfect in. True. Uh, true. Uh, they might recognize me, but if I came back with a warrant, they're like, le much less likely to beat me up. You're forgetting the fact that we come with Nick in tow. Surely these are his people. He can explain the fact that we're here simply to procure the case that he is supposed to take care of. Well, and I guess the warrant can be our plan B. It's not the worst idea, I will admit. Charles, you're taking the fun out of it all. I'm sorry, I'm not built for this cloak and dagger stuff. I'm far more interested in being straightforward about uh, retrieving my property. And if there's some IRS agent in there, I don't need him getting his hands on it. Like I said before, the Falstaff name has enough taint grown around it. I don't need to... I don't need to add whatever's in that crate to it, the rumors that swirl around my family's name. As he's listening, Pete's got his uh, baseball bat, and he kind of steps back from the car and reaches out and taps... The, the driver door glass with the bat and then just makes a fake swing at it like he's busting the glass out a couple times <laughs> and then shakes his head and rests it on his shoulder. Like he was considering Pete, doing it? Yeah. <laughs> is that truly necessary? Oh, I, I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like Nick comes back from his uh, draining his... Uh, Lizard there, and uh... Nick, Nick, can Nick, we please proceed inside now. Uh, speak to your Nick, men. Let Nick, them know. Should... Sorry, go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Charles is just a little flustered at the moment. Oh uh, yeah, we'll uh, uh, we'll have and Nick will finish. Uh... His uh, uh, shirt back into his pants. <laughs> uh, is it locked, or am I just walking in? Or so are we, there? If you look at the map, there you've got uh, all the the There's red green arrows dice everywhere. The, yeah, the red arrows. The one door is ajar, but uh, there are other doors if you would want to go to any of them. So how are you going in? Um. 
I think I will go towards the door that is ajar. Okay, go ahead and you can move your guy to where you want to be, and then you, everybody else can kind of position yourselves. I, uh, I shove all the papers except for the warrant back in the attache case, and then I toss it back in the car and follow Nick. Walter right. kind of sticks to the back since he thinks he might be recognized. Okay. I'll, I'll walk with Nick. Towards I'll, the front. I'll stick back with Walt. Okay. All right. so Charles, you're moving. Did I, did I move that crap? Computer's being a bit uh, finicky. I, yeah, it looks like you're right at the doorway. Okay. And then Charles is moving in about there. Sure. Okay. All right, so you should see it just inside the door. There's another door. Um, as you open the door, let's see here. Let's do this. Reveal thy secrets. All right, so... <laughs> Um, the first thing that happens is as and Nick, as you're walking in the door, um, almost like an invi an invisible barrier. Um, hit like, like hits me. Yeah, it, no, it's just it's like a, a wall of smell. It's this like really cloying, almost like musty stench. Um, it, it's like moldy, rotten meat. Uh, Walter, did you uh, did you hit this place up before we got in here? What uh, what's going on, Nick? It smells like death Whoa. in here. That's Ooh. unpleasant. Ooh. I haven't uh, smelt anything like that since. Ooh, that game in St. Louis. Uh, Pete, this smells like laundry day at your place. Oh. Um, Only when you bring Charles your Charles will have a drawers over to cover his nose. The, uh, the the smell is actually so bad that as you enter, each of you have to make a con check. Oh God! Oh <laughs> well, isn't that convenient? <laughs> hey, we're playing a role-playing game. Let's roll some dice. Yeah, let's do it. Wait, what now? Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> I'm just RPing, okay? <laughs> just a regular con check? Uh, Looks you, like I barely made it. Yes. So, I thought this was a diceless system. <laughs> so yeah, I, have, I was uh, 50. I was playing improv. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh shit. Well, it looks like I'm the only one that failed. Awesome. Hold on. I haven't. Walter's still got to go, but I'm pretty sure he's going to fail. I think Walt managed because he, he was already vomiting. Hey. Oh, yep. Walt failed. Yay. We're peace buddies. <laughs> All right. Yep. So, how come he rolled uh, five dice and I rolled two? Um, well, if you, if you, on your character sheet, if you hit the dice that is next to. Whatever oh. whatever stat it is or whatever skill it is, it'll roll instead of rolling one set, it rolls three and applies it to your straight up roll, your half roll, or your or your uh, quarter roll instead of just rolling one dice. So you could do it either way. You could uh, um, you could hit the percent roll that I the macro that I set up. So you just roll the one dice, so you don't have to apply it to you know, okay because it doesn't. It, to, honestly, I don't understand That's why weird. the character sheet did that. Where it rolls it three different times rather than roll yeah. once and apply it, you know. So I guess maybe the there <laughs> that no doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Are you trying to roll beneath the yes, number? Correct. So correct. I failed. All right. So it looks like um, Walter failed. Um, Falstaff failed. Connor failed. Connor failed. And Nick like a champ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, out of curiosity, if you if you feel like there's something within your past or something that would give you an advantage on a roll or something, um, how would would there be any way to add that into well? Inception? 
um, poss it possibly could. Um, I mean, it, this is the, this is dealing with a with a just nauseating smell. So you could try. Um, <coughs> It's not really a skill check, so you're not re not really press. You, c I suppose, you could press it and just. Uh, and the only the only thing uh, I could think of is I have one very specific time where I may have caused a uh, rank smell of death. Well, and had to give deal them with a, it. a bonus to the roll. But yes. that's not that. That's something that I really care I'll tell you about what, in this that, situation. That's a, that's a good point. Um, so Kevin, you rolled a seventy-six. Go ahead and roll yeah. a percent roll again, and if it uh, take the better of the two, fifteen. Okay. So yes. Not that I really cared about succeeding this one. I was just more cons more interested in the uh, the game itself. Yeah. Um, what uh, what you can do is there's uh, you can pr what's called press it. And what that means is you're you get a reroll, but you, if you fail again, then the the consequences are the stakes go up. Um, oh, okay. You have to okay. determine how you're pressing it, and if you fail, then you know it's like like the example I gave before. Uh, you try and open a door, you can't. Okay, I'm going to press it. All right. Well, how are you pressing it? I'm going to throw my body against it. Okay. okay. If you if you make it. You're okay, but if you fail, you may be fall. You may fall down on the other side, or may, you be in a vulnerable position. That okay, kind of so in this situation, I was pressing it because at one point in time in my life, I trapped a lot of people in a burning room and <laughs> murdered them all. <laughs> well, technically, wow. didn't that doesn't that happen in the future? Uh, no, that was in the past. Yes. I made sure that that was in the past. Yes. Okay. That my yeah. character has already been. Was, what, what, what you're talking about, it was a flashback. Uh, of... You're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. So. And so I, in order to keep things under wraps, I guarantee that I was part of the cleanup of that. So. <laughs> okay. I've been through. Some... Not, to, not to be anal about it, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm coming off as... I know it all or whatever, but it's actually pushing the roll. Oh, yeah, you're right. Not pressing. Not pressing. Yeah. Push, press, press, press. Yeah, pull. just <laughs> if if people are going to be watching us trying to learn how to play the game, I, I want to make right. sure we got the, Get term the terminology right. right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, all right, so yes, yeah. What happens is uh, the smell is just really so bad that it's causing your eyes to water. Um, so you can take some time and kind of gather your senses or maybe uh, do something to help, uh, like, gird yourself against this smell. Uh, if you just decide to proceed on, then any uh, sight or concentration-based uh, rolls are going to be at your half roll. Ooh. So Connor would, because he was kind of behind the main group, mm -hmm. when this wall of smell and stench hits him, he would actually start coughing really hard, like into his into his arm, and his eyes would start watering, and he would back out uh, into the rain. Okay. So he he would so and and kind of turn his head up towards the sky and and hope that the, uh, the fresh water would would clear his eyes a little bit. Okay. All right. Walter Walter backs out of the doorway and kind of turns along the wall the door is on and just starts to dry heave. Okay. Uh, he's already had a constitution hit uh, once this evening with the bourbon, so he was not prepared. Okay. <laughs> All right. Those of you who made it, uh, what are you going to do while they're doing that? <laughs> Push forward. Okay. I'm just going to press I'm, the I'm say... handkerchief against my nose and kind of look around. Okay. All right, so stepping in... I was just going to say, uh, some broads that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Um, stepping in through the door. All right, the next room... Uh, there we go. Looks like this. Look at all the blood. So, 
you can go ahead and move your guys into the room at this point uh, and position yourself where you would like to be. So, yes, as you're coming in, the, the, the internal lighting is not great. There are overhead lamps, and um, as you're coming in, the, the thunder is going on outside, and it's raining, and the lights are starting to brown and flicker. Whoa. Um, and is that a, a blood trail? Uh, very, uh, very well could be. It looks like there's um, a few spots of blood. Looks like some maybe uh, foot or even handprints on the on the floor and in the on the walls. And then yes, there's very there's some streaks of what looked like blood leading. Oops, I need to reveal a little bit more here. Um, leading to a door, to double doors. I'm gonna Nick is going to first notice the the lights on because, you know, he, his family pays the rent. So that that first is going to be uh, pissing him off that the utilities are, uh, are, are out of whack. <laughs> and then when he notices the blood, he's going to say, What again? What the? And follow it over towards uh, where it goes. What is it? So, There's friggin' blood everywhere. Is it Walter's? <laughs> Is it mine? <laughs> uh, well, it's a lot of it. So chances are, um, uh, those of you who maybe have seen blood in the past um, w would probably gauge that um, the this is a lot more than just getting your you know getting your ass whipped blood this is like cut cut somebody open blood uh i will motion for everyone to keep it down uh, that is that is definitely not my, my blood this amount of blood the uh the idea of what it possibly could lead to requires a sanity check <sighs> yes did uh have have I come back into this yet, or uh, you, well, once you come in to see it, uh, everybody else um, has already entered the room. You've kind of cleared yourself. You've you've taken your moment to kind of get over the the the, the situation. Um, when Connor, wa when you walk in, Connor, you don't have to roll sanity. Awesome. Uh, oh, oh. Okay, that's good. Uh, sanity is going to be found where? You can only see one of my dice. Um, there it is, sixty-six. Yep. It also pops up in the chat window yes. on the right. Ah, okay. So I rolled over my sanity, which means I failed. Hey right, you failed. So those uh, did anybody, oh, there it is. anybody else fail? It's the oh. die that's to the left of sanity. Uh, you had a little dice icon sheet. there. Uh, it's to the right. On yeah, the sheet. Yeah. It, if you look at your sanity, um, oh, your current. Yeah. Just hit. Uh, oh. The, it's just. To the yeah. Left. Yeah. It is to the left on sanity. Yeah. My bad. Huh. I pressed it and I didn't see a roll. Oop. Uh, Does that's it? Probably because. Let me click on Nick. Um, you pushed it. Here we go. He pushed the button. Try it Not now. Not the roll. He pushed it real good. Push the button for Try try rolling it again. After your musical interlude. There you go. He's not stopping. That is a lot of dice. All right, so that Good. One, you have got it. Yes, that is under your sanity. So, um, who do we have? Uh, who's failed? Walter. Walter failed. Yeah. Walter's the only one that failed. Walter's not having a good day. Uh, that's a bad day. <laughs> not a good bad day. day, Walter. Bad Walter's day. Walter's having a bad day. <laughs> All right. So um, had a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so uh, this is the Spotify of Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> really you said I would not understand. Take a around. All right, so uh, Spotify, so you threw it up. All right, so if you look at uh, Walter, if you look at your character sheet, I am now con- yeah. uh, changing your sanity from its uh, from its max its maximum to its current. You have lost one point of sanity. Don't touch it. So oh, only one. Yeah, that's blood. It's just blood. Um. <laughs> So, but moving forward, Walter, uh, from now on, if you see copious amounts of blood, eh, it's old hat. All right, great. So, all uh, right. Um, we're still not really doing turn-based stuff, so what do you guys want to do? Follow the blood. Yeah, so, follow the blood. Uh, so, uh, what did, um, what did Walt do when he reacted negatively here did he just like fall down did he back out of the room he turned if he could turn any whiter he'd be transparent gotcha All right. <laughs> so with uh with connor being kind of coming back into the room behind the group again he sees walt reacting like this and I, I guess he's taken a bit of a liking to him with this whole situation. So he'll uh, he'll stoop down, grab him by the shoulders, kind of pick him up to his feet, try to uh, help him steady himself and regain his composure. How do you? How do? You, how do you? Oh, the smell and the blood. How do you? How are you? Just acting normally. Oh, because <laughs> the because the GM told me. <laughs> oh. Walt, I need to take you to a couple brothels I go to. You, this won't, this, this shit won't bother you anymore. Don't, it, no, no. Sally wouldn't like that. Sally doesn't need to know. Who said anything about Sally? Nick, you're disgusting. Thank you. <laughs> my kind of, you're my kind of fella, Nick. We should hang out. <laughs> Listen, behind closed doors is behind closed doors. All right. <clears throat> So, looking, hear, peering through the door there. I hear there's a place out in the desert where if things happen there, you don't have to tell nobody about it. Yeah, I heard about that place too. It's run by the mob, right? I think so. How do you make the dice go away? Because now they're obscuring everything. <laughs> click on the screen. Click on the, click, click on click the on. screen. Click on the dice. They'll go away. Oh, there they go. They went away. All right. So oh, hey, there's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Pete, as you look through the door, you see the blood trail leads to a slumped body near the door. Oh. Oh, that's the cop. Okay. Okay. I'm going to walk up and see if he's still alive. I think if I... Is it right clicking? <clears throat> All right, you go up to him and checking to see if he's alive. He is quite obviously not alive because it looks like he has been oh. ripped to shreds. Oh, dear God. Oh, oh man. As Charles Falstaff is right next to him. So Walter walks into the room and sees a guy in pieces. Yes. Um and literally says old hat and then old walks hat to a different room. Piss y'all. Right. <laughs> what is on that? Do you need to head? roll for sanity again? Um yes, this is it's this is more than just a smear of blood, so yes, you will need to roll for sanity again. Uh, All of us? Uh yes, unfortunately. Okay. Oh no, I got a seventy one. What's my sanity? Oh, <laughs> oh I failed. Old hat! <laughs> Blood, I don't do. Eviscerated bodies, ah, what's the problem? <laughs> my well, sanity. Yeah, did look in that dumpster uh, earlier, so this is, you know. My sanity's an 80. Uh, yes. You are, are 79. Sane. Wow. <laughs> those, uh, those syntax errors are my attempts at a roll, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me. Uh, I think that means I automatically pass all you, checks, right? You win. You you've won I, Call of Cthulhu. I just won Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> Did my roll not generate? Try, uh, try it again. Uh, yeah, you got Sorry. a fifty-three, Matthew. Is that what? I, yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. I passed. Thirteen and sixty. Nice. I'm good to go. Nice. Did anybody fail that? So I, I did. Pete did. Oh, Pete. Uh, one point of sanity, sir. 
Uh, so Pete walks in and he sees it and he yells, um, uh, and his baseball bat comes up over his shoulder. Like he's going to clock this body one as he leaps backwards a little bit. Pete, 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 relax, relax, Pete. Calm down, calm down. Jesus. It's just a dead fella. That's more than just a dead fella, gentlemen. This man's dead been fellas apart. Dead fellas are in caskets. At the funeral parlor, this is this is more than a dead fella. I mean, I mean, they end up they end up there, but they start out here. Pete shudders a little bit. Uh, we uh, we've obviously got some problems here, and this is a cop. Uh, yes, he is a okay. uniformed police officer. Hmm. Do you think he was the guy in the car outside? Uh, n no. I don't. I don't think he's not from the revenue service. Is there now a person in the room with us that did oh, not come in with us? You, wouldn't, you, wouldn't are you, there you're noticing be a that? Present to serve the warrant. Oh goodness, we have turn order. Oh we shit! Do. Yes, as uh, as you're as you're looking. Oh you're... shit! <laughs> there seems to be a be a vagrant to our left, gentlemen. <laughs> What? Hans Bodkins, someone is in this room with us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So from uh, from behind what looks like a some sort of a a, a a a counter comes crawling out this creature. It, it looks very much like he, he he's wearing a pinstripe suit. Um, his face is looks like the the flesh is just sloughing off of him, um, oh. and you see. Uh, quite obviously, he has some sort of worms or something just under his skin because his his skin is just undulating underneath. Uh, and he's and he's he's like he's just crawling towards you, and he's got <laughs> blood just all over him. What uh, in blue blazes is that? Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure again. we're gonna have to roll sanity again. It is a sanity check. <laughs> yes. Why is there any? Ever a, a skill check in Call of Duty is not a sanity check. That's all we ever want to do. <laughs> big bucks, big bucks, no whammy. Stop. Uh, Yay! I thought it was pretty good for you, Michael. Damn, eight, uh, failed. Eight, uh, eight under sixty. I'm good again. Wow, nice. Man, I must have seen some shit as a gangster. <laughs> Jesus. Apparently, I'm sixty-seven care. over sixty. Uh, so that is a fail. So who? Did uh, where do I where do I mark that down on on the left of the die to the right of the die? Uh, when you your current sanity is to the left of the die, your maximum is to, to the, the right. Left. So so f what am I taking it down to? All right. So those of you who fail, uh, wait. First of all, yeah. Those of you who succeed, um, <laughs> we still take damage. No, you, you lose nothing. <laughs> But oh, those of you who fail, lose D8. Four oh. sanity. Oh, jeez. Fuck. Four? Four sanity. And you all have some kind of outburst. Do math, Eric? Yes. Yeah, so what is your, uh, what's your outburst that uh, happens when you see this thing crawling with worms heading towards you? <laughs> Jesus, Louise, is Rodney, is that you? <laughs> Rodney, right. Rodney. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I will change his name now to Rodney. <laughs> and in a ghoulish voice, you hear, I don't get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we will now go in turn order. Um, and in this, it goes by uh, dexterity. Um, so, Nick, you, sir, are first. Now, uh, if you have a readied uh, uh, firearm, you get plus uh, 50 to your initiative because all you got to do is pull the trigger. But if you pull a weapon, that, that counts as your action. I mean, you could pull and shoot, which would mean you're, pull, you're going at a, at a penalty roll, uh, or you could pull the weapon and ready it. Uh, mm -hmm. Pete, you have a... A baseball bat, so you have a you would Damn right. have a, a readied weapon, uh, but it's not a firearm, so you would go at your regular right. initiative. Yep. 
All right, so Nick, you're first uh, as you, you, know, you yell at uh, Rodney there. I thought I, uh, I thought I had just had some handsome fists, but uh, I looked at my sheet and apparently I got a pump shotgun and a forty and a forty-five. So, uh, <laughs> what's this in my pocket? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, right, what's in my pocket and what's in this other pocket? Damn, that goes down my leg. He's got um, a clown pocket. <laughs> what the world is it out. So I'm actually gonna pull the forty-five and uh, ready it. That'll okay. be my whole turn. All right. 45. All right, Pete, you're up. Uh, okay, so I'm going to <laughs> uh, yell, sweet Jesus, run up to this guy and just clock him with the baseball bat. All right. So... <laughs> I was going to say, I hope so. You almost clocked the stiff. <laughs> <laughs> he clocks the one that doesn't move. <laughs> yeah. He's being sneaky. He just, starts beating, he just starts beating the dead body, and we all look around going, this is called Cthulhu, am I right? <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, so uh, go ahead and make your, uh, make your brawling attack. All right. I got, I'm going against the 75. Oh, wham! Woo. All right, now hell he, yeah! Now he gets uh, he, he obviously you've got an extreme uh, uh, success there. Um, oh yeah, was he fighting back or he was has, he? He has to fight. Yeah, that's he's not dodging, so he's definitely fighting okay. back. So here's his roll. Uh, he oh, he no. takes it. So yeah, <laughs> uh, that's an extreme uh, success. So you're looking at max damage. Pow! All right. Let me go back to my character sheet, find out what damage for this thing is. Um, 1d8 damage plus my damage bonus. Where is my damage bonus? It's a home run. That's your damage bonus. Your damage bonus is a d4. <laughs> it's a d4? Yep. Okay. So that's um, 12 damage. 12 damage. Okay. You wow. sock it. And... Uh, Loud crack, its head uh, rocks to the side as you just kind of, you know, you step into it. Um, head rocks to the side, it slumps down um, and is still moving. Ooh. All right. Connor's That's not next. Right. Yeah. So you went crack and it, 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 fa it falls down and then the, the, the worms or whatever's underneath it, it it's, it's still. F wiggling and then you see it just kind of start to raise its shoulders up again and like it's trying to get back up all right so we're in a docks area right correct is there anything around us like a table or a chair or something i could pick up and throw at it absolutely uh there's chairs there's um you know there's um there's, I'm basically anything you could think of in a dock. So even like uh, there's there's dollies. There's you could pull a, a, a bar out of one of the the, the pallet lifts and or anything like Ooh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what? So Pete just went went up and whacked this in with a baseball bat, right? Correct. So I want to find um, like a pole of something or maybe a big old crowbar, maybe. Okay. And uh, grab it, and I, I, I want to move to. Uh, can I grab the thing and attack this turn, or would that be next turn? Uh, that would likely be next turn. Okay, so then I want to move to kind of. Um, well, I'll move my character. Um, be up here as I run and grab this thing. I mean, if Pete's up there fighting it, obviously I'm not f as phased by it as the other folks. So I want to get over there and try to be more threatening. Okay. Right. And I will be uh, yelling and screaming obscenities at it to <laughs> try to keep its attention over here from the other fellas that are losing their cool. Okay. You uh, damn monster. All right. <laughs> Walter, what are you doing? Uh, seeing it drop to the ground, uh, Walter runs up next to Pete and just starts kicking the living bejesus out of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead and move it's up. Totally a gangbang on the zombie. Now Whoa. that uh the... Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah you can actually yeah move up around that. That uh there's the line um uh, nope. I'll show you here. Uh, no you're That's... fine. No you're fine. I, I this is not actually a wall. It's more of just like a, 
uh, <coughs> just a little staging area. So it's kind of cordoned off, but it's not a, not a full wall. There we go. All right. And what am I rolling to to kick the shit out of this thing? That would be your uh, brawling uh, fighting, I believe. Yes, fighting brawl. If you don't have the skill that says shit kicker, I don't know why you're pl you're playing this game. <laughs> fighting brawl. There we go. All right. So you got. That's a lot of dice. Yep. So you oh, got he a failed. Yep, that's a forty out of a, th uh, and you're you need a thirty or less. Yep. Uh, so, so Walter runs up and, uh, and whiffs yep. big whiff. -a. Like every he kicks like three or four times and just keeps missing this thing. He's hand obviously not skilled at this. Right. Hand to hand combat is contested. Uh, he, most of your monsters will uh, will try and parry. Uh, or uh, you can dodge, but for the most part, most monsters are going to try and parry because if they succeed, which, oops, I don't know why I did that twice. Um, the first one, uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay. Uh, its fighting is 30%, which it rolled a 41. So neither of you hit. Um, so no damage was taken from either one of you because if i would have succeeded and you failed you actually get hit what, did it at least look interesting uh yeah you kind of went you kind of like crow hopped up and down uh around it <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's it's just kind of like batting at you and... take that you worby son of a bitch all right charles you're up. and that and that <laughs> and some of okay. this so I'm freaked out over this whole thing. I'm going to draw my pistol and try to run through this door here. Okay. Is that door open? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just an inside door. It's not locked or anything. Like that. Okay. So I'm going through that door and hiding behind the wall on the other side. All right. I will reveal that there. So break area, office, and uh, lavatory. But I have my pistol drawn. Okay. All right. That's what I'm doing. I totally want this thing to contaminate one of us with its little worms. It's I'm right. a hero. Stop giving him ideas. <laughs> Respectfully <laughs> disagree. Res uh, I no, please. Thanks. <laughs> Judging by the brothel comment, Nick may already be infested. <laughs> True. <laughs> Something like that happened in my uh, my game for DM's block. <laughs> <laughs> then it was a quality game. <laughs> well, I'm sure Caleb wants to get infected so he can kill my character. That's what he usually does in these what? games. What? <laughs> what is that? Where is that coming from? What you, game did that happen? What? The last game? two I played with you. <laughs> yeah, which, yeah, which game? Because I don't what? think I was there. What other game did I kill your character in? You killed me in uh, oh God, uh, the last game we played in the uh, the Dream Chaser game, right? And uh, oh man, spoilers! I'm, I'm great. Drawing, I'm not and Rob's game. on that. Fuck me. Yeah, I haven't listened to the whole thing yet. Come on, <laughs> you killed me in Rob Stith's game too, right, Michael? Oh, you. that's right. With the the things in the woods. So, <laughs> right, right, right. you know what? Fuck you, you, <laughs> fuck you. Forget it. I'm done with podcasts. Good night, everyone. <laughs> we got, uh, we got a God demon us. doing something. <laughs> you know, right. I'm just. I started listening to the Hunter uh, World of Darkness game uh, for Sharkbone, and I'm just glad that Eric hasn't pulled out any double sided dildos. <laughs> <laughs> it's early, sir. It's early. I didn't kill anybody in that game. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You know what? Just don't yeah, finish listening to it because they'll end up ruining it by the end of this. Yeah. Oh. You did kill somebody, Caleb. <laughs> not, not a, not a player. No, no, <laughs> not nice, a player. Come on, you're making Matt salty. <laughs> Matt, Matt, do I need to send oh, you another Matt Valentine? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So the uh, Thanks, you're, you're crowding around this one. Uh, Walter, what, uh, because you're the closest, you hear something r 
in the cold storage area start to move. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Ooh, I chose the right room. <laughs> this All is right. great. So um, we'll say that the one on the ground getting uh, getting trounced is going to swing randomly at, uh, we'll say, uh, let me do a... D3 clockwise? Oh, God. D3 clockwise. Looks like it's going for Connor. Bring it! All right, so... All right, so he is going to roll his fighting, and you also roll your fighting. And if you uh, want to fight back, if you want to fight back, or you can dodge. Um, where is dodge? Oh, I see it. Never mind. Um, would I just use my brawl since I technically picked up that weapon? Yes. Or? Yes. Uh, you know, I will roll my brawl. Okay. Roll. Rolling. Nice. Wow. Good lord. Okay. Uh, so you have a greater uh, level of success. Um, so you do damage to him. And that, oh, you don't get to, uh, you don't get the uh, extra damage for when you're defending. You only get that whenever you're attacking. Right. That's fair. Um, so go ahead and uh, roll your regular damage for, now this is a, um, this would be considered a club or a like a staff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that damage is in this game. Like here. six, probably. If it's like a baseball bat, mine is a D8. There you go. We'll use that. Okay. Uh, and then you would wait. also get your your damage bonus. Let me see. Oh, which is it's a also a plus four versus undead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, dumb question. Where are the regular dice? <laughs> Uh, on uh, your on your left hand side. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah. All right. You so, can also type slash roll in the I, chat. I always I do those. I always do those wrong. All right. A D eight and a D four. <clears throat> Looks like seven damage. Okay. All right. So you've done seven damage. So to sum up, Pete comes up and cracks it with his Louisville, and you grab a bar, and it goes after you. And you you um how how do you take care of this thing? Um, so it, it, it's, this was a, this was on the floor, right? The same was like crawling on the floor and like zombie reaching up at us, right? Correct. So it's reaching up at me and I just kind of, I step to the side and golf club swing this huge crowbar right into his collarbone and just shatter it. All right. So yes. Um, and in direction that you're swinging, nobody gets hit by the back blast. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I don't think I would have cared. But I was oh, actually going to suggest that Walter gets splashed with Icker. <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point, I'm going to shake the crud off of this new crowbar weapon that I'm definitely keeping. That'll, Walter will definitely be in the way of that. Um, just so... Uh, I'm just going to embrace this. Uh, it's a shitty day for Walter. <laughs> well, <you> <laughs> <rename> <laughs> the, the, yes, the title of this will be Walter's shitty day. <laughs> Walter had a day. Walter's no good shitty fucking day. <laughs> um so yes, you you completely uh uh rip this creature just completely open and as it spills out onto the staging area there, you see that uh what you initially had thought was uh was worms crawling up underneath it. Um it, it looks more like uh, small fingers of of tendrils. Oh, no. <laughs> and it, and, it, and you quickly realize that um, part of this overwhelming stench is coming from came from this creature. Fingers. Oh, no. oh geez. Uh, is uh, is one of the is that green line uh, like an opening in the docks? Uh, the the green line there is actually your health. Oh, <laughs> let me rephrase that question: Is there an opening going outside? Yes, yes, there are. There are like dock doors. Yes. Okay, so with this thing dead and smelling so bad, can I take my crowbar and drag it towards the outside and just throw it out the dock? Um, you could do that on your next action. Okay. Is, oh, we're still initiative. That's yes. right. 
right. So, uh, so that was that one. It atta actually attacked you and and got trounced on its own action. So this, right. uh, the other one, moves up towards Walter, and this one is actually shambling. It's not crawling. So, oh, like, did did the cold storage like did the door open? Um, yes, you you heard. Uh, well, actually, it's. Um, they keep uh, blocks of ice underneath, so it's really Got not. It. It's more of a. It's more of a raised area. That the dark yeah. line there is more of a like a step up because they keep the the ice underneath the cold storage area. So, uh, so it's okay. it, it, like shambles towards you and kind of stumbles as it steps over the over the. Uh, oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus! Oh Jesus! <laughs> All right, uh, it is a contested <laughs> roll, so it rolls a zero two. Oh, oh, Walter. My boy. All right, Walter. Beat that. <clears throat> Fuck, get a zero one. That would just make my friggin' day. Mm -hmm. You just put your foot through his head. Where is it? Where is it? We're all the dice, Walter. Come on, buddy. Wait, no, it's on my character sheet. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> get after it, Walter Moore. And I, again, I'm rolling uh, fighting. Correct. Come on, zero one. Uh, That's a no. That is a no. <laughs> All right, so it no. hard it, pass. It's a giant no. Yes, so it 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 stumbles off of this uh, oh, one no. step into you, um, to the point where it is it, he's on you like completely, and he got a, an exceptional success, so he does three points of damage to you. So Walter okay. is now. Oh, he doesn't do a whole lot. But then we don't have many hit points either. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Drops me down to eight. Yes. All right. Oh, God, get this thing off me, you guys. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, ah. <laughs> So, oh look, you're contaminated. Wal Walter's oh. green bar is a little bit smaller. Uh, he had a little more <laughs> gurgle to that screen. <laughs> All right, so that was that creature back around to Nicholas. Hey, Walter, get off of him! You have a firearm ready, right? Um, can I fire from here, or do I have to? Or should I be uh, over on top of Walter to, to fire better? Um, I, I don't know how like firing around people through people works in Call of Cthulhu. Here it, we go. It, Here's uh, where the party dies. This makes me really nervous. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what, what you're doing is you are now firing into melee. Because oh, okay. he is. Okay, good. Which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is roll with penalty. Oh, good. I believe you're right. Yes. So if what, not, it should be because yes. Jesus Christ. So you can uh, you can click on your uh, click on your icon and you can press the button for penalty roll. I Jesus. sure can. I'm a little nervous to do that, but <laughs> so there's no way to not do that unless I just enter into melee myself, right? Correct. Yes. You could just if you if you're if you're you know concerned about hitting Walter, which is a, a valid concern. Um, Listen, Walter's <laughs> Walter's having a shitty day. Yeah, you can make it a whole lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I can make it a whole lot worse. So, Walter, press duck. the button. Here we go. Wow, sixty-nine. Here we go. Damn right. it. <laughs> so you're coming in, uh, Walter Duck. Yes, Walter Duck. Look out. Um, so this is Nick, and you're using your pistol, correct? Yes. All right. So you're using firearms. Handgun, which is yours, is a fifty percent. Woo! So and you rolled a sixty-nine. Yeah, so, actually rolled a seventy-three because he's rolling with penalty. Oh yes, your penalty roll, correct. So I don't know why it did that. Oh, it takes the higher. That's weird. Well, since it's a roll under system, yeah, the penalty yeah, yeah. takes you higher. Well, right. Lower. Right. It's but it's weird that it it generates the. The one that it's, that it's highlighting is the lower. Yep, I should I should have made that keep high one, not keep low one. Mm. Adj Damn macros. Yes, adjusting macros on the fly. Here we go. Um, <laughs> skilled GMing. Yeah. All right, now it should uh, should work correctly. So yes, you. Uh, so do I get 
I get a reroll then? No. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> on, nice try though. <laughs> We're just <laughs> RP this, yes, right? That doesn't right. count. On the downside, you missed. On the upside, you didn't hit Walter. <laughs> hey, there you go. Yes. So I just blow put a bullet into the cold storage unit. Yes, right. Yeah. So now there's uh, there's a hole. Oh, Stan's gonna beat my ass. <laughs> All right, so that was Nick. Uh, next up is Pete. Uh, Pete's going to pull the same thing. He's going around and hitting for the stands. Whack. Okay. Uh, percentile roll. You could say Pete's going clubbing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, bum uh, Versus 75, so that is a success. Nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, you can – oh, let's see here. He's, he's probably fighting back. He is fighting back. Uh, he got oh, oh. exactly what he needed. So, <laughs> so what was the, what was the difference? In you? Uh, I got uh, eight under. Eight under, and he got exactly. So you win. So you come in with the bat. Pow! Go ahead and uh, roll your damage, sir. All right. Well, there's actually a, an interaction for it uh, on who would take the tie. I don't remember what it is, though, so it doesn't matter. I, I got a whoever's, D84. Whoever has the, whoever has the greater uh, skill. If it's a if it's a parry situation. Whack! A mole. Ah, four damage. Four. Okay. So, not quite as impressive as the last uh, walking dead creature you smacked but uh, no, i managed to get this one in the shoulder and right. so he just kind of jerks to the side a little bit right okay and next up is connor um so the the zombie is or the creature or whatever is still wrestling with walt right yes he is still currently on top of walt okay then I'm going to, I'm going to, oh God, this is so dumb. I'm going to get behind him. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put the crowbar like uh, over his head against his neck. So it's, I'm like pinning and pulling him towards me and try to twist him into me and pulling away from Walt. Oh, okay. So you're trying to like wrench him off of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm very stupidly doing it with myself as part of it <laughs> instead of, you know, right. a, another smarter way. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. Putting the uh, crowbar in position, that, that's easily done because he's not really resisting that. So yeah. what we'll say is let's do a contested strength check. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm apparently pretty strong. Rolling that. Jeez, two under 70. Wow. All right. Well, let's see what. Uh... Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's just not cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. These guys are rolling well. Uh, fucking zombies jesus all right it's like the popeye music kicks in all of a sudden <laughs> is it actually rolling a, D a d100 because i only see one die but it says rolling d100 on the side that's weird well i think roll 20 just treats it as literally a number from one to 100 <laughs> yeah uh so you got a four under what i got a two under 70 a two under 70 it got a five under 80 so both with uh, with uh, exceptional success, uh, unfortunately that's a tie. So and tie would go to the defender in this case. So you're wrestling. So now you just got the bar behind him, and you're like you're putting everything you got into it. You you're like I, I would have ripped a damn rhino in half, but this right. thing is still just. As a matter of fact, uh, you're now pulling. Let's kind of make some. I'm pulling Walt with me. Yes, right? you got. You actually pull back. The whole group. Was, oh. was that a fight versus fight? Yes. Uh, in a fight versus fight, in a draw, the attacker the takes attacker it. The attacker takes it. Okay. Yeah. So, Walter, you pull him off of Walter. There we go. Okay. There we go. That's right, because on shooting, it's uh, the, it goes to the defender. Yeah. Cool. And if the target's dodging, the defender takes a tie. Right. 
<laughs> okay. So, yes, you pull him off. Now you've got him kind of wrapped, uh, kind of held there. And just in time for Walter to go. Uh, <laughs> Walter screams. I've made a terrible mistake. And Run jams away. his thumbs up into this thing's eye sockets. Ooh. Yes. Okay. You're getting your hands dirty, Walter. <laughs> They're already dirty. Real dirty. dirty. <laughs> going to shove that hand all the way up to the pocket watch. Did, did we invent Purell <laughs> yet? <laughs> Wrist <watch. laughs> All right, Walter, go ahead and make your... No, but uh, they do have moonshine, which is better than Purell. <laughs> All right, I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, fighting again? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, how bad is it? Oh, come on. <laughs> I can't... <laughs> <laughs> so Walter's thumbs slip, and his lunge actually causes him to headbutt the thing, but it doesn't do any damage. It just stuns Walter a little bit. <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, you come in close, oh, and it's yeah, that's right. That's its right. Claws that's are right. kind of flailing around as it's being like uh, choked out by this extra long uh, uh, crowbar, and you step in to like grab its head, and it it just it's cracked and bloody nails just scrape against you uh tearing into the flesh of your uh, of your cheek all uh, right so he is going to do his d4 damage uh is that right d3 damage so oh, here we go one point of damage <laughs> you lucky so walter that green line is getting smaller and smaller Smaller and smaller. <laughs> well, guys, this has been great. <laughs> As this happens, Walter or Connor's like, Walter, I was trying to get him away from you, goddammit. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, back around to Charles. <laughs> so you can clearly see what's going on here. Yeah. I, I know. Him. <laughs> no, don't shoot him. Shoot him. No. <laughs> no. I strenuously object. Does uh, does shooting take into account people in the way? Um, it does not. Uh, but what you could say you do is you aim, which will give you a bonus. But having fi firing into melee, it causes a penalty, so that washes out, and that would be a straight up roll. All right. So with shaky hands, Charles leans out. Takes a big swallow, aims his gun, and takes a shot. So if you aim, that's going to take your action. Oh, so I wouldn't <laughs> be able to shoot till next time. Correct. Just shoot okay. him. Okay. Um, Just take so... the penalty die. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't vote for that. I like to veto that. Uh, you know what? Charles is freaked you out. How many like, vetoes left? He's gonna hold his gun up. He's gonna start to aim, and then he's gonna just duck back behind the corner. <laughs> okay, taking cover. Yeah, just <laughs> just in case. Be it just being useless. Okay. All right. Uh, the zombie creature is. It's his turn. Um, one second. Okay, here we go. All right, so as this is going on, um, let's see who would see this. Nick and um, Pete, as you're standing there, you're watching this. They're the they're wrestling around with this this uh, creature. Um, hold on a second. Okay, um, coming into the flickering light is another one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, so uh, the one that you have hemmed up is going to attempt to um, reach back and grab Connor. So uh, attempting to scratch. So it, that would be a contested uh, brawl check. All right. Um, hold on. Let me find my brawl real fast. I will roll his roll first. 88. <clears throat> Oof, that's horrible. Uh, rolling brawl. 
Oof, eighty nine over sixty five. So I I failed worse. So both fail. So he's he's flailing, trying to trying to get a hold of you. You're yeah, yeah. You're trying. So to like I, I have the crowbar. I'm like wrenching, like doing this kind of back and forth, and he's flailing at me. Right. All right. Awesome. So that one scratches. This one is just moves into the area, so you can get a clear glimpse of him. Um, and they act on the same initiative, so I'm not going to add another one. Um, I know I will. Uh, all right, add turn. I'll just move him up here with him. There we go. All right, so that one went, that one went, and we're back around to Nick. Yeah. You've got a ready firearm, right? I sure do. Yes. And it's already, it's already emptied one chamber, so let's empty another one. Here we go. Uh, am I technically shooting into? Oh, were they moved? Why'd they move? They uh, because up. Caleb was trying to drag him away. Yeah. I... Oh, gotcha. I'm gotcha. Oh, okay, so I'm still shooting into combat. So another pen penalty roll. If you, if that's the one you want to shoot, um, I'm not sure if you heard or not, but there's another one. Look down. There's another one coming. I, I am looking at that one, but Slugger's kind of facing off against that one, and I don't want to get in the way of uh, of his uh, <laughs> his uh, bat in a thousand so gotcha. far. You know gotcha. what I mean? Gotcha. I'm better off. I'm better off shooting the the, the Mick or, or the uh, or, or the pencil pusher. You know? Gotcha. Uh, so right. yes, you would so, be shooting into melee, so that would be a penalty roll. All right, I'll do that. Boom! Press the button. It's happening. All right. So uh, again, you uh, you shoot Damn. you shoot into Damn. the uh, Damn. you shoot onto the the cold storage area, and uh, you something is now leaking into the floorboards. Good. Um, so uh, qualifying question: What would I have to roll to hit one of them instead of the zombie? If, oh, if like a my miss accident? Is a Wait, miss, are you miss. asking yeah. to hit one of them? <laughs> no, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying, like, if I have to roll a penalty because I'm shooting into melee, I thought it was because there was a chance I would hit them. Uh, I think that's on a 96 or up. Yes, correct. 96 oh, or, or Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. On okay. any, yeah, whether you have, uh, you know, penalty or not, if you roll a 96 plus... I you it's a it's a fa it's a flub and critical failure i think is actually a hundred percent and that would be like really really bad well it depends okay. on the the value of his skill if his skill is less than 50 percent, then it's 96 or up right. if his skill is more than 50 percent, the 100. yeah okay thank you so if you're sucky with the skill you're gonna flub a lot more <laughs> right now, uh, is my forty-five a revolver or a or a uh, automatic? Let's see here, Nick. Your forty-five. Because it just says forty-five. Yeah, forty-five revolver. It oh, it does have revolver. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have four chambers left. Cool. Yep. Uh, if you look at your weapon, let's see what uh, forty-five revolver has. It says uh, attacks one, and then in parentheses three. That means technically you could fire three shots, but each one would be at a penalty roll. And it would be an additional... Oh, I didn't know that it was... That went all the way across. I'm an idiot. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, well, te technically, by the rules, it's for each shot over the first one, you add a penalty die. So it would be you instead of um, two percentages, if you if you did like three three bullets, it would be three percentages take the worst gotcha yeah i mean by the rule roll 20 is a little bit of a different monster because it doesn't let, let us just roll one uh tens or a uh, uh, single digit and then three tens then take the worst tens so you have to kind of basically just take the worst of the three rolls if that makes sense okay so um what are you wanting all right so you fire you uh you hit some sort of uh, Miss. yeah some some sort of liquid is now seeping into the floorboards of the cold storage. Freon. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, now we're to Pete. Okay, and uh, you said before drawing and firing in the same action is at a penalty, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my 45 and fire it at that new zombie thing down there. Okay. So Kaplow. You are uh, thirty-six. Nice. 
I don't know if that passes. Let me look at my <laughs> firearm skill. <laughs> Firearms. HG or handgun. Okay, so I'm at a 40, so that is a success. That is a success. Go ahead and roll your damage. And then I have a 1d10 plus 2. Um, let me look at something really quick here. Okay. Um, Matt, what's your, uh, what's your straight up, well, what's your straight up skill with your, uh, with your gun? Straight up skill with my gun. The reason I'm asking it's is. It's a fighting. It should be firearms. firearms. It's a fighting brawl. No, no, you were, you were shooting, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So look under. Uh, no, I'm next to revolver so is it's fighting brawl though. That, that that's a mistake. Um, oh. Let me look at. So fighting firearms is uh, a yeah. fifty. Fifty. Okay. The reason I ask is because um, where shooting uh, into melee is a is a uh, penalty, but shooting at point blank range is a bonus that would wash out. That would have been a regular roll for you. Not a penalty roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, so gotcha. I, I'll, I will. I'll go ahead and take. Go ahead and roll damage on the uh, on the creature then, because you uh, technically should oh, not cool. have missed. And then uh, Devin, go ahead and roll your damage on uh, on your roll as well. Woo! Cool. Nice. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. you got eleven damage on that one down there. Good lord. Big old uh, heavy revolver just barks. Bunch if of smoke I press, comes up if I press the die next to the revolver, it's gonna roll the damage or no? It should. Let's see. Lord. So we're all also deafened by. The oh, it's at the <laughs> very the very bottom there. It has your damage. That, oh. So it rolls nice. your it rolls your skill <laughs> and it rolls your damage all for you. Oh, cool! Damn, I wish yeah. I rolled. That, that, <laughs> that was a good shit. damn roll. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good damage. Uh, well, it was a good hit roll too. Look at that, eight hundred fifty. Right, all right. So, um, yes, uh, Nick, you level your uh, your forty five. Uh, Connor's got it stabilized, and uh, Walter kind of staggers back for just a split second as you uh, as you shoot it. How how do you take it out? Um, I think that the way uh, Walter is is um, I'm sorry. I think the way Connor is holding it is kind of like. Uh, out, outstretched arms and the head is kind of flailing around maybe trying to bite Walter and I kind of just uh, put it just blow and uh, send the bullet through its skull and whatever left of its brain into the uh, the Freon that's now leaking on yeah, the floor. And now, yeah, there's more than just Freon leaking into the floorboards now. Yeah, now, now there's fluids which probably smell like uh, death. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. Um... Yeah, so now you're holding this, uh, Connor, you're holding this dripping form. Okay. Um, Pete, how much damage did you do? Uh, 11. 11 damage. Oh, okay. Yep. Gotcha. And I've got that noted. All right, so we're moving on to Connor. So there you go. All right, so I've got this... Uh, I'm just going to let the body drop. Okay. Um... Let it hit the floor. <laughs> One could say that. <laughs> I was thinking the same Let thing. The bodies hit the floor. Um, and the one that was being shot at is still up, right? Yes. Uh, it, it, it's got some holes blown in it. It's it's all not right. looking well at all. Uh, well, it's technically in the, a different room then, huh? Um, because I'm still in the cold storage area. Yeah, it's not. It's not an cold storage. Isn't in, in is not enclosed. It's just a, oh, it's okay. a raised area. It's a raised platform. That was okay. the mistake I made, too. Gotcha. I thought it was like a closed off. I was thinking like a big freezer. Yeah. Oh, so I'm actually kind of a little bit elevated above the staging area? Correct. Oh. Well, hey, let's continue these bad decisions. Um, <laughs> so if I moved over here and then kind of jumped at it, <laughs> coming down at it to hit it in the head. Okay. How would that work? Uh, go ahead and I'll, I'll say um, go ahead and make your attack roll because it's it's really focused on Pete because Pete just blasted it and you're kind of right. coming at it from the side. So go ahead and make your uh, your brawling, uh, your fighting brawling with it with a bonus. So if I just hit a bonus roll on my character, 
that'll roll two, right? Uh, should. Should Do Pete it the be people's in elbow. melee with it? You got 14. Or should the critter be in melee with Pete? Uh, no, he shot at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, so that looks like a 14, and my brawling, uh, my fighting brawl is a 65. Oh, nice. So that's a, yeah, that's that's a an extreme of success. It uh, it does get, and it just barely succeeds. So you definitely come in uh, uh, max damage. Actually, yeah, max max plus uh, with extreme, it's. Max plus. Nope. Just it's max damage. So the D8 plus my damage die, right? Which is a D4. So maximum it's 12. 12 damage. Which. How, how do you take this one out? Oh, I just drive its uh, head. I cave it in and drive it into its torso. All right. So it just squishes. Yep. Squishes it down. Okay. And I spit on its body. <laughs> All right. Um, you stand there for a few seconds and nothing else comes crawling out of the dark. Pete kind of walks slowly up to Connor and looks at him as, and the spit on the body and says, Connor, you're disgusting. True, true. Connor, but, you're uh, my hero. How could you disrespect <laughs> him that much? I, I think the counts my two to your... I just let it hang there. Huh. Oh, you're counting, huh? Yeah, yeah. And I will shake the gore off the crowbar uh, and, and shoulder my brand new weapon quite proudly. <laughs> uh... Pete starts walking south. All right. To see what's down there. Walter's getting to his feet when the the icker from the crowbar <laughs> slaps him in the face. <laughs> uh, quite quite clearly. Covers his face and, and the top half of his shirt and coat, and he just goes back down on his back again. And Walter's no good, very bad day. Finds his <laughs> way back to his feet again. Pulls and, out his handkerchief. The splatter and, hits Walter. Yeah. <laughs> If yeah, the spider hits Walter, I'm just going to look at him and say, hell of a day. <laughs> it got in my mouth. <laughs> All right, so, so go ahead. Charles is going to walk out of the room, kind of ruffle his suit coat and everything like that. Well done, gentlemen. <laughs> well, we survived. Yeah. Does anybody have any water? There's these ice blocks over here. You could lick them if you want. Oh, no. I've, I have a flask on my person. You could take a pull from that. Are there, hey, uh, Nick, are there any restrooms in here? Oh, yeah. Back, uh, back where we came. Uh, there appear to be uh, some restrooms back in the uh, break area. <laughs> I'll uh, I'm gonna go wash up a minute. You guys decide where we're going, what we're doing. I I don't. Let's just get that chest or get that crate and, and get the hell out of here. Um, just so everything's clear, if uh, you can do first aid on a on a character. Uh, within the first hour of them being injured. Um, if you succeed, he gets one hit point back. Um, if you get an extreme success, he gets two hit points back. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've just got the base chance, but um, I would probably think of that. Walter got injured. Yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm... As as Walter's kind of walking to the bathroom, he's like, I, "Yeah, yeah, I got injured." Uh, let me let me take a look at that, and I'll go with him to the men's room. Okay, sounds saucy. 
Oh my. Uh, can I go back to the body of the cop we saw? Sure. So given the fact that we just fought these things, does it now look kind of like the cop was ripped apart by human hands? Very likely, yes. Hmm. Uh, uh, choking back maybe uh, the stench of being so close to the body. Maybe I want to poke around a little bit, see if I can find some ID or a badge or sure. anything like that. Okay. Um, yeah, very easily you find uh, this guy. His name's uh, Carl Valentine, and he is uh, St. Louis uh, City Metropolitan Police Department. Um, looks, yeah, like he's just a he's just a standard like uh, beat cop flatfoot. Hmm. Well, probably just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Remind me to make a donation to the city's police force. But he had an actual badge on him, right? Yes, he did. I'm going to take that badge. Okay. You now have uh, Officer uh, Valentine's badge. <laughs> All right. Um, Nick, what are you doing? Well, let's see. Um... They're going to the bathroom. They're taking badges. I think I'm going to... No, come on. They don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I'm going to walk over. See, is that another spot of blood? or? Yeah, there's more, there's more blood on the ground. Um, but as you get closer to... Um, get closer to it to make sure, and Charles is right behind you... Um, in the general storage area, there are some shelves, and um, you hear something. Something is moving just beyond the last shelf there. I can't wait to find out what it is, guys. Um, <laughs> how far can I move in an attorney? <laughs> oh, it, we're not really in turn base, so I mean, you can. Okay, I didn't know. That. Yeah, you can move as far. So as I can you, move as down as you like. here, and, and this is another not wall, right? Correct. Correct. These are just cordoned okay. off areas, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna move right here and say, "What's going on here?" Okay. Uh, Charles, what are you doing? I decided to stick with Nick. Okay. All right. Great. I want to get this done. Great plan, guys. Yell for the other zombies. Now there's a there's a <laughs> dead cop. There's things attacking us. If I'm going to get this crate and get out of here, it needs to happen soon. Right. Listen, That's Slugger, we're, we're in charge. So I'm back trying to fix Walter's uh, wounds, and I'm making more of a mess of things than anything else. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's not really doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's like poking at things and uh, Charles, let me just just let here, let just let me do it. Just let me do it. And uh, I, I got it, Wally. I got it. Look, look, I've <laughs> I've bandaged myself up enough times. Let me just let me do it. God, and, uh, fine, uh, fine. And, and Walter tries to all right um, swage his own wounds. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, hold on, I can't see, but I'm sure it's horrible. <laughs> 88 over 45. Yeah. So, so Wal Walter's not. You you need more professional help, I think. Uh, <laughs> so, um, Charles, as and as you're following, stop bleeding. Right, uh, Charles, as you're following Nicholas um, behind you uh, in the general storage area, um, in the round about that, uh, what just was revealed. You hear something in that corner that's still dark. Something is definitely moving over there. Okay. Um, I'm going to lean over my shoulder and talk to the people I think are behind me. Okay. <laughs> what was that noise? Someone go check that out. Yeah, the only person who can hear you say that is, uh, is Nicholas, <laughs> who's in front of you, and Connor, who is way, way far behind you. Yeah, what? So that what? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm stealing shit off this dead guy. Uh, yeah. Oh, he has a wallet too. Uh, oh, yeah, taking it. Fifteen bucks. Ta oh, hell yeah, I'm taking right. that. Jesus got paid. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, that uh, frightens Charles because I only went down this hallway with Nicholas <laughs> because I thought everybody was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know, I'll I'll kind of point my gun in that direction. Is someone back there? Okay. Um, the uh, the shelf rocks as if uh, responding to your voice. Um, okay. One second. Damn it. I'm not checking that out. <laughs> I think it's probably a teddy bear. All right, um, and then six foot tall teddy bear, ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> hey, look, um, it's the IRS guy. Shum yeah, uh, crawling out from underneath uh, one of the shelves, you see a guy in a suit, and his he's his eyes are just wild, um, like all the sanity is completely left him. Do you recognize him? Um, you have never seen... No, no, you've not seen this guy before. But it's, oh, he's in a pretty okay. cheap suit. Okay, I've got my IRS. gun drawn on him. Stay right where you are, sir. And he's just like, ah, oh, oh. Can All I, right, pal. Can I what hear this? Here? Can I hear this? Yes, you, you very on? clearly hear it because he's just like, he's babbling and, and, and screaming at... Uh, oh, okay. Then I'm going to start running okay. towards it with my crowbar. Okay. All right. So run, 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 run. Uh, those of you in the bathroom can can hear it as well. Just it's, it's more muffled, but yeah, there's definitely some screaming going on outside. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've raised my voice. If he comes anywhere closer to me, I'm pulling the trigger for my 45. Okay. All right. He certainly does come a step closer. Oh, uh, cripes, Pete. We got to cheese it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I think Pete left you. <laughs> Pete? <laughs> All right, so. I have to find Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like uh, that's, well, that would be point blank range. So. Yeah, that's a hit. Oh, so that's a hit. Um, blow. Chicka blow. Well, your second roll, because if it, if you're if you're doing it at point blank range, that's a bonus roll. So that would have been your okay. first your first two rolls, which would have been a forty two or a ninety two. So your forty two would have would have been your lowest, which still would have missed. See what I'm saying? Oh. Okay. So he's craw he's like he, he's starting to get to his feet. He's coming towards you guys. Um, I'll let uh, Connor and uh, Nick and Pete. You can do an action before we, because he's still kind of moving. He's not really. He can defend himself, but he's he's not really in initiative. You guys can do something to him before that. But he's just he's just gargling, right? He's not really making any sense or noise or. Right, right. Yeah, he's just kind of gibbering and just like, Bleh! and he's not worm ridden, right? Okay, so you don't see worms now. Okay, so, blow. Okay, great. <laughs> so he he's but he's We're awfully awfully squirrely because he can't be hit. So. <laughs> yeah, it's because he's closer. filled with worms. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so two people just took a shot at this guy, right? Right, and he's just he's still coming. All right. So as my far ears, as you know, that he just took those bullets. So my ears are ringing, but I'm going to run forward and try to bring the crowbar down on his skull. All right, go for it. Uh, fighting brawl, right? Yep. Man, we are murdery. <laughs> Twenty-four under sixty-five. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, his uh, resistance to that is an 88. So, yes, you definitely 24 over 65 or under 65. So that is, um, yep, that's definitely damage. All right. Uh, 
eight total. Eight damage to him. All right. So you come in with the crowbar. You smack him. He uh, staggers into this uh, uh, into the shelves uh, just south of where he was standing. Uh, Connor, so you are now standing there. All right, Pete, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to tackle him. Okay. All right. So that's a fighting maneuver. Mm-hmm. So um, I think your build, I may have misclassified your build on there. My build is probably going to be a one. Very likely. Which his would also be a one. So we're equal build. Um, yes. So it's... He would probably fight back against me, or would yep. he dodge since he's insane? Um, he's He would probably fight back. He's not really thinking clearly enough to go, ooh, get out of the way. All right. So I'll roll Brawl. I got a 68, which is a success, but just a success. Okay, his defense, a 90. Oh! So you uh, you have now tackled this guy and are now laying on top of him. All right. Yeah, I just uh, blow right into him. My shoulder catches him in the gut, and we go straight down to the floor. Okay. All right. Uh, Walter, are you doing anything? Walter's running up to see what the, all the, the fuss is about. All right. That's his action. All right. So um, you've got him pretty well pinned, um, and he's damaged. So he's he's uh, he's flailing, but he's not uh, he's not really fighting. He's not trying to bite you or anything like that. He's just uh, at this point you've tackled him. He's laying there. He's face down. So you're laying on his back, and it it sounds like he's crying. Walter exclaims, "Hey, uh, hey, that's the IRS guy, isn't it?" I, I don't know. Is he? Looks like an IRS guy. I should have hit him harder. Hey, buddy, <laughs> calm down. We're here to help. Um, okay. Uh, you could... Ooh, this is a good one. Um, you can attempt a... I think it's psychology? Probably. Yeah. To try and figure out what exactly could be done for this guy. Um, you, I, I'm really good at this role. I tell you what, I got a 10% <laughs> chance of success. <laughs> oh, if no. you get it, I'm going to love it. So, oh no. So yeah, you're <laughs> like, buddy, sh stop, stop it. Stop it. And you know, the minute you get off of this guy, he's probably going to try and hurt somebody or run. You're not. All right. So I'm. I'm still holding him down. I got my knee in the small of his back, my uh, uh, one elbow across his shoulders. It's like, it's, this guy's he's completely mad. Yeah. Knock him out. Do something. Yeah, he's just screaming at the top of his lungs now. Um, oh, God, Pete, can you shut him up? Oh, oh God, that's loud. Okay, I'll clock him on the back of the head trying to knock him out. Okay, go ahead and just roll your damage because you've got him pretty much hemmed up. And this is uh, non-lethal, so it would be... Okay. So yeah, that's just damage bonus, right? Correct. <laughs> One. <laughs> so you, ah. you, you rabbit punch him in the back of the head and uh, it just kind of... He smacks his face uh, on the floor and uh, he just... Is now he's laying still. Uh, I will take out my handcuffs um, and I will. Um, let's. What does this shelving situation look like right next to us? Is it like metal shelves that are bolted to the floor? Correct. Okay, so I will handcuff him to a shelf. Okay. All right. He is now handcuffed, unconscious to a shelf. It's a shame we couldn't get the man to see reason. I'd like to know what's going on in this place. I think we're going to have to keep looking, find someone else. Yep. Um, oh, and now that you've picked him up, you see from his inner jacket pocket, you see that he had like a, a wallet or something on the inside of his coat. 
I'll pull that out, take a look at it. It's a badge wallet, and yes, Department of Treasury. Uh, yep. Tax man. His name is Abraham Linston. And Sorry about that, Abe. Yeah, he's got, uh, wait, wait, did you say Abe? Abe. Yeah. Oh, shit. You know him? This is the guy that was... This is the treasury agent that was supposed to be raiding this warehouse. Well, it would seem that they knew he was coming. Or something else happened. I don't know about those wormy people up there. Hmm. This is getting pretty weird. Yes. Uh, Charles, how badly do you really want this package? I'm afraid that I must, I simply must lay my hands on this package. I, I was afraid you were going to say that. We, well, you got to get the package out of here now anyway. I mean, like, uh, with everything that, with, I mean, the bodies and the blood and everything else that's here, I mean, and we've got a, a we have a, we just handcuffed a treasury agent. To the shelving unit. This well, is that's... this is horrible. We we got to get our get this thing and get out of here. I'm afraid he's right. If we don't get this crate out of here, it could be traced back to my brother, which could be traced back to me, and it could potentially implicate me in the goings on of what's of tonight's activities. And if anybody puts us together at the bar, well, I'm afraid there might be. Too many noses stuck in at this point. We may be too far gone. Removing any implication that we could have been here is probably for the best. And that means getting the package out. Pete stands up, shakes his head, and uh, moves to pick up his baseball bat and revolver that fell to the floor when he tackled this guy. Uh, and then he pops out the cylinder, uh, looks at how many rounds he's still got available kind of spins it a little bit and then pops the cylinder back in says all right well, let's get to it all right if it means anything to you gentlemen i i promise to be of more use in the future encounters we may have uh, this, this isn't good. We got a dead cop. We got this treasury agent. Whatever those things are, uh, this is not not good at all. Well, we didn't kill. We didn't kill the cop. That's for sure. Yeah, but if they if they find him, if they find us, if they implement, if it, it looks, it's bad all around. They're gonna think we did it. If we if we remove the crate and leave, then. But Tony, the cops the are going to be trying to figure out those maggot bodies for months. I think we'll be fine as long as we're not here. I think Tony's the only one who knew we were coming this way. Perhaps the cab driver. I will. Tony ensure, will keep his mouth shut. I in, I will ensure that cab driver is bought off. Do not think would less I, uh, of me. What I need to. Would I need to make a roll to see if I remember where uh, the crate was left, or um, no? You wouldn't need a roll. You knew it was in the back, uh, near the back, where they were doing some renovations. So um, you're head you're headed in the right direction. Okay, I'm uh, I, I'm going to be the guy. This guy, uh, it's eleven forty seven Eastern. Mm. Uh, I'm probably going to need to wrap it up pretty soon. I have to work at about five a.m. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I kill Walter. I find the book that has the weird language in it and start reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that ends the game, right? Uh, well, let's uh, we, head, we all head go, to the we back. all go insane and start feasting on the cop's body. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, these snacks are good. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna shit, maggot. Go down this way. Okay. All right, boys. The uh, the. The crate, the, the blip, boys. The crate is uh, over this way. Wait, who's this? <gasps> dun dun dun. No, it's the crate. Ah, the crate. 
That's a big crate. Good thing I brought it's, all these beefy boys. It's crate <laughs> to <Shagoth>. see you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we got the crate and the shagoth? And this guy? He looks handsome. Oh, that's a that's a fine looking gentleman. That I'm sure we can talk part. some sense into so him. So what you're looking at here is uh one second, there we go. Um what you see here is uh, what looks like a plain co closed cop uh, at the end of a drag of blood. This is on your right hand side. Um, mm -hmm. So it looks and like to your left, and to your left <laughs> is is the body of Thomas Rice. Oh no! no. Oh, my sister's gonna kill me. Uh, looks like uh, there's a little bit of blood on the floor at Thomas's feet. But beyond that, uh, doesn't look like he's. Over, I mean, you don't even know where the blood came from because it's not like he's he's been wounded in any way. It just looks like he's just laying there. Um, is he alive? Which no, one's no, Thomas? He, he is dead. No, you said he's dead. The one closest to the crate. I'm gonna. Charles is gonna run over to him. Okay. Oh, geez. Pete's gonna run over to the crate. That's always a terrible idea. Thomas, <laughs> Mr. Falstaff, please. You know, like shake him. All right, so um, yeah, he's yeah, he is quite dead. Um, looks like uh, perhaps his his heart had stopped or something. He is, it doesn't seem injured in any way, but he's certainly his eyes are like wide as he's as if he's seen too much. Um, as you get closer to this uh, to this crate, the uh, it is a, uh, it is made of black wood, and it smells terrible. Um, looks like there's there is a crowbar actually it looked like it had been used to pry it mostly open, um, and you see that just under the um, the side was broken open, and inside is a black lacquered urn, uh, very large, uh, very easily um, maybe two. Two feet in uh, in diameter, and then uh, about Damn. three feet tall. And it's it's, it's guess, right, and it is just it's it's black, jet black lacquer, no markings or anything like that. And the very top of it has like a resin cap, and it looks like somebody had jammed this crowbar into it and popped the top a little bit, and the crowbar is now just wedged in there. It has it like got like it got stuck. Hey Connor, you can dual wield. <laughs> and the the dead guy is slumped over next to it. Yes. Does is there a, so the crowbar is still in the urn? Like, correct. Correct. Um, I think Pete's just gonna grab the crate um, by whatever means he can and just start dragging it across the floor. Okay. Or if he can pick it up, if it's not that heavy, then he'll pick it it's, up and start yeah, moving it's, it. It's pretty heavy for one person. Uh, you might be able to like grab a side and have somebody else grab a side. Um, but as you're getting closer to it, um, you notice that from the uh, where the crowbar is, there's a separation of the cap and the top of the urn, and something moves on the inside of it. And those of you who are closest, that, so that would be uh, Pete and Nick um, see this because uh, Charles is really looking at um, looking at the body of his brother-in-law. Um, there, you swear it, it must be like a trick of the light or something, like because the light is still faded and brown. Um, so it looks like there is a uh, like a, almost like a semi-transparent tendril of some sort of undulating um, um, appendage stretching out from the crack in the top of this urn and it is uh, goes right into the top of Thomas Rice's head. Whoa! Oh! No! Ah. Oh wait, so it's coming out right now and going into yeah, Thomas's you, head? And, and you can, yeah, you, it's not. It didn't stretch out. It's it's like as if it had always been there, but just as you get closer, you, you it's because it's it's mostly see through, 
that you had to get really close to see it, and all of a sudden, it, it uh, but the the light kind of glints off of it as as you can you can feel like it looks like a jellyfish. Uh, you can kind of see mm. through it, and it and the lighting is is not is not great. But yes, you see Sanity. it's definitely something sticking out of the top of of this dead guy's head, and it's just it's just sitting there, kind of flowing in in an unseen or unfelt breeze. I don't like it. Um and. Walter went over to check out the dead cop. Uh huh. Does not notice any of this. Right. Uh, those of you who are standing closest to it, which would uh, be uh, Gedeke and Pete, Pete uh, make sanity checks. I I succeeded. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> still, that's crazy freaky. I'm expecting to still lose <laughs> sanity for this no. one. <laughs> oh, Damn, goodness. failed. Do I need to make any kind of sanity for seeing seeing your brother, brother in law dead? Uh, yeah, yes, you do. Figured. I think the only one who's not making a sanity check is Connor, and that's because he's trying to size up which hand goes on which crowbar. See, the smaller <laughs> one, the swing is better in my offhand. So it looks like you made your sanity check to see for seeing your brother or your brother-in-law. Um, and then Gedeke looks like you failed. Seeing yes, the, sir. The, the creature and then Brinkley succeeds. Okay. So um, Charles, for seeing your brother-in-law, you get, there's no loss. Um, <laughs> he's like, oh, well. Um, I wrote them off <laughs> right. earlier. Uh, the other two who see the uh, the tentacle coming out of the uh, the urn, uh, if you made it, uh, you lose one sanity. Uh, if you fail, you lose four sanity. Acres. All right. So, um, so what happens now is you this. You react. Uh, you, you just lost some sanity, uh, so you react. Ah! Yeah, you, you see it, and the the appendage slips out of the top of Thomas's head, and now is like moving towards the two of you. Um, can we stomp on it? <laughs> um, you can certainly attack at it. Yes. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's seed this into initiative. Um, those of you, um, Michael, I know you got to go. If you want Walter to split, he can run out that door. I can play this out. Okay. Let's go. Let's do okay. this. All right. Um, <laughs> Just run I straight into the tentacle. It'll be cool. I don't expect Walter's going to live. So. <laughs> If he's going to die, I want to be there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Um, so Walter had gone over to check out the dead undercover cop. It was in the process of trying to, like, check for identification when the he heard the crate drop and turned around and sees what there's a scuffle over there. Something's happening. Right. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, what is that? What is that? Ah! It looks like an angry beard. <laughs> Let's see, I'll move him over a little bit. There we go. <laughs> I, I don't see like a scorpion that. tentacle. Yeah, and you're basically right on top of him too. Um <clears throat> this is going to be the thing in the box. <laughs> the thing in the box. Step now I'm one. just imagining Justin Timberlake singing that. <laughs> open the box. Step <laughs> to two. <laughs> Not speak more in the it's box. It's sugar in the box. <laughs> Step. <laughs> All right. If you uh, lose sanity in the box. 
All right. That's three quarter in a how box. we do it. And um, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. Um, you see how it has a green, um, there's a green circle around it. Can you see that? I do not yeah, see a green circle. A green no. Time. All right, let me adjust. <laughs> maybe that's just for me. Um, still no? No. Nope. You got to nope. save some things just for you. I guess. All right, well, um, what it has an actually has an aura. Um, and... So, anything within that within that uh, circle range is it's it can attack. So, um, but we're gonna go in initiative order, and first off is Nicholas Gedeke. Sure, Nicholas Gedeke is going to uh, level his pistol, which is already out, and go kablammy. All right. Uh oh. Whoa. <laughs> wow. You were a little too afeard. <laughs> yep. The gun goes off as he's uh like leveling it towards the thing. Yep. So boom goes off. Uh next up is Pete. So I've got a revolver. I can fire the revolver three times in a round. Yes. I want to. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm scared. I'm just going to pull the trigger as fast as I can. All right, so that would be, uh, we'll do it as th uh, three penalty rolls. All right. All right. Oh, let's see. What is my handgun? 40%. So I do not have a good chance here. Boom. Okay, that's Boom. Boom. And boom. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So oh, that's a hell of a distribution. <laughs> yes. Wow. All right. So, yes. All of a sudden, bullets are starting to fly. Connor, what are you doing? Uh, so I, we, there's this horrible thing that just came out of a box. Yes. It's it's it, more of these, uh, these um, ropey tentacles are starting to pour out of this uh, top oh, of this God. urn. Fortunately, uh, the, the hole's not big enough that all of them could come out, so it can only do like two at a time. Alright, so uh, I'm, I'm dumb, but I have a sense of self-preservation. I'm not going to run up to fight that thing. Um, so I will draw my pistol. Okay. And they... Um, these are shelves right here. So can I move like over here so I'm kind of in between the shelves? Yeah. Okay. So I'll move over there and draw my pistol. Okay. All right. All right, Walter. Uh, Walter has... He's not really quite sure what he's seeing, but uh, he bends down to grab the 45 stub nose that's uh, uh, still laying at the side of the cop. Okay. And that's his move. All right. Charles Falstaff. I'm just going to start shooting at that thing. Okay. I don't care who's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh... I, I don't really have a great shooting. But my gun's already out. Yeah. So shoot him. Might as well take a shot. So let's see. Firearms. <laughs> What's HG? Handgun. Handgun. Oh, okay. Earlier I used the wrong one. Nice. Whoa. That, Very nice. That is yeah. 9 under 40. So that would be... Yeah, that would be an extreme success. Sweet. Bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so with an extreme success with a bullet, you do max damage plus roll damage dice again. All right. So click on my face, and what do I what do I roll there? Uh, let's see here, Charles Falstaff. Your 
45 automatic does D10 plus 2. So you're doing tw ah, 12 we. damage plus D10 plus 2. Okay. Did I do that right? Yeah, it just rolls. It rolls your attack again, but you did so. So you you did twelve damage plus the damage listed on there. So that would be twenty two. That's twenty two damage. Damn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic shot. It is. And uh, yeah. I also I also pulled Thomas's body up as a shield. Nice. <laughs> you love that, don't you? You absolutely love body shields. Oh, that you remember. <laughs> oh, oh, that I remember. All right, so you pull pull the body of uh, Thomas closer to you. You shoot over the top of it, and uh, like I said, there's two tentacles. Uh, you shoot near the base of the urn, and sever one of the tentacles, and it just it pops as if like a like a bubble. And releasing this horrible stench. Now there's only one tentacle. Luckily, because now it's time for the thing in the box, and and it's Charles just eliminated one of its uh, one of its attacks. So now it only gets one attack as opposed to two. Hallelujah! All right, so it's going to attack one of those who are closest to it, uh, which would be either Pete or. Nick, so I'm gonna do a D4 with Pete being one two, and that's a four. It's going, oh. going at Nick. All right, this is a uh, this is a brawling uh, check. Uh, you can either you can either parry or you can dodge. What are you gonna do, Nick? Oh, sorry, I'm gonna parry. Okay, go ahead. it is rolling its brawl and gets an 08. That what I roll as well? <laughs> <laughs> so that is an extreme success with a tentacle. And you will roll your brawling. Yes, you're, you're fighting brawling. So the honor roll? Yes. And you get a 30 under 55. Damn. So it got a better it's still st success. It's still a success, but yeah. not as good as it got. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, so it got an extreme success with its tentacle. So that's max damage. Mm -hmm. Max damage Ugh. for uh, this thing's tentacle is 3d6. <laughs> that is oh, 18 damage. It's been nice knowing you. What? Nick. Good knowing you, Matt. Eight. Wow. Yeah, so what happens is... It's over, huh? Yeah. Uh, one da one <clears throat> on one hit, um, over, over your hit points, it uh, there there's no doubt about it. So Tentacle wraps around uh, uh, Nick, around his, his head and face, and just bashes him up against the urn three oh. times. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, no. And he just goes limp. Nick seemed nice enough. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Unfortunately, that is a R.I.P. Mr. Geneke! Mr. Geneke! <laughs> yeah, his, uh, his, sh his shotgun is now at his feet. Oh, yeah, I was about to pull Nick. the shotgun when I ran out of uh, revolver bullets, but you know what? <laughs> Fuck me, right? <laughs> well, it, it wouldn't be uh, Call of Cthulhu if someone didn't die. <laughs> Very true. We just need someone to go insane, and then we've got it covered. Yeah, we do. All right, so yes, the body of uh, the body of Nick Gedicky is now laying at the at the base of this uh, of this urn. All uh, right. Man, it could have had two attacks. That would have been sweet as sweet. Um, <laughs> all right, you're welcome. <laughs> Pete, Pete, you're up. Uh, all right. So um, I just saw Nick get killed in front of my face. Uh, that angers me, scares me. So I just scream with primal fear and anger, and I pull the trigger again. Okay. Uh, trying to kill this thing. Yep. Uh, one quick thing. Now that uh, it is, it is 
because it is more manifest, I will need a sanity check for from everybody again. Because just one tentacle is like, oh, what's that? But now it's full. I on. failed. Oof. <laughs> Hooray! Oh, I failed. Okay. 70 over 60. Okay. And made it. All right. Those of you who succeed lose three sanity. Jesus. Oh, no. Those of you who failed lose one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is anybody thank at... Thank you, random dice. Yeah. Is, <laughs> nobody has fallen below half their sanity, have they? No. No. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Um, and nobody has taken a five or more hit in one uh, in one thing. No. So. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, all right, Pete, what are you doing now? Uh, I pull the trigger. Okay. And shoot this thing. Okay. Uh, it's point blank, so you're going to get that at a bonus roll now that it's... Uh, just you and it. Nice. Uh, that'll do. Uh, I'm at a 40, so that's uh, not a fifth of it. So nope. it's just a, a hard success. Yep. Um, and I do 1d10 plus 2 damage, I think it was. Boom! 11 Ooh. damage. Woo! All right. Boom! The the uh, the tentacle quivers, but it's still there. All right. All right. Uh, Connor. Um. Oh, I had drawn my gun last turn. I'm going to shoot it. Okay. Um, hold on, I gotta look for my guns are. Uh, firearms. Uh, Don't hit gun. me. <laughs> Wait, am I rolling disadvantage or? Uh, it's technically not in melee with him yet, so. Okay. Because it's eating me. It's technically in melee with me. Right, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. Munching, yes. It's in brunch with you. Well, I super <laughs> missed. 87 <laughs> over 60. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But boom. All right. Walter. Uh, Walter. Uh, Walter doesn't know his guns that well. What he actually picked up was a thirty-eight automatic. Oh, okay. It was on his character sheet, but I didn't see any. I didn't really think he would have it on him after just being released from the hospital. Oh, well, so it, it, it's the twenty. He man. found one. Yeah, he found one. It was on a street corner. I mean, they uh, give you that when they get out of the hospital. That's right. Well, it's like your party right? gift. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is my first time doing actual like shooting. Okay. So. I'm going to roll my firearms, correct? Yes. And Firearms see. HG. All right. All right. I, uh, Walter's going to try and level the firearm and remember the, the real simple training he got from the guy at the gun shop when he bought his personal. <laughs> Point that way, pull the trigger, make sure there's bullets in it. And here we go. And no. Nope. That's a miss. All right. The 38, the 38 barks once, and you hear the bullet ricochet off of some steel shelving. Yes. Uh, back to Charles. Yes, uh, nobody has had any, like, uh, like critical failures with guns, so you're not, like, you don't accidentally, like, shoot the urn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shooting yeah, you know, again. At the only thing. bad thing we've had is someone has been eaten. <laughs> So, but apparently Nick is delicious because that thing just will not let up. <laughs> Listen, I try to eat organic, and uh, <laughs> I don't smoke a lot. <laughs> uh oh! Oh, oh no! That, yes. I, I spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, All <shit>. right! <laughs> shit! 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 So yes, um, so Charles. Shoots at the creature, misses. Uh, I will say there's a. We'll do a 50 50 chance. 
Fifty <laughs> percent oh, chance you hit the urn. The other fifty percent chance, or so, uh, one through one through fifty will be the urn. Fifty-one to hundred will be Pete. Ooh, I don't know which I want the more. Urn. <laughs> it's the urn. It's, oh. it's the urn. So the urn. He shoots the urn, and so now a it cracks, and this gelatinous mass starts to pour out of it. Like that's probably a good thing, though, right? <laughs> Always, and just yeah. in time because now it is time for the thing in the box to go. It's the thing in the box. <laughs> the thing in the box, girl. All right, All right. it pours out. Your mom says hi. Jinx. All right. Uh, within its attack range, uh, looks like Charles and uh, Pete. What? And it will attack each one of you. All right. So we'll do Pete first. It is a brawling check. All right. I'm fighting back. And I get a zero one. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, oh God. <laughs> It it doesn't even matter. I'm not even gonna roll. <laughs> well, actually, could, I could I could, could get it. a zero one. We are we are never using roll twenty again. <laughs> roll twenty is roll twenty dice. I got a forty two. So uh, that is that's just a regular success. That's so, a regular yep. success. So it get it's not uh, luckily it's not a penetrating. So it doesn't get the additional damage. This uh, this attitude. isn't the hentai attack. Yes. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Nick got that one. Yeah. But still. Still, uh, I mean, it does max damage, it does just max like damage. it did to Nick, yeah. so I'm probably a goner. Yes, with 14 hit points, and it does 18. Yep. Oh, oh no. All right, so, yeah, so... Oh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> so it grabs, it, it grabbed on to, to Nick and slams him up against the, uh, the urn, almost like it was trying to break the urn with Nick, and then all of a sudden it kind of spills out onto the floor after after Falstaff shoots the urn and it the 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 roiling uh mass of of translucent uh tentacles just kind of boil over onto to Pete and he is never seen again. Oh <laughs> Lord have mercy. Walter Walter <laughs> screams Pete uh, Pete tries to scream in fear um, as he's being engulfed, but before sound can come out of him, the gelatinous goo goes into his mouth and his nostrils, and uh, he just disappears into the goop. Nasty. And then it gets its second attack. Oh, no. And Pete and Nick are now uh, Waldorf and Statler in, in hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Falstaff. It's going to roll its brawling attack on you. 37. Uh, under its fighting is 80. Oh, Jesus. So it is under half. So you can dodge or you can parry. Hey, if I remember right, Falstaff's got plot armor. <laughs> 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 Let's see. Dodge or parry? Let's see what's that under. Dodge is 35. It's the Daffy Duck defense. <laughs> Where's parry at? Oh, it's your, I'm sorry, it's your brawling. Oh, brawling. Yeah, I'm sure he's really good at brawling. Let me find that. Nope. All right, so let's see. Nope. 86 over 35. Good Lord. All right, so how much damage does Falstaff take? Take seven points of damage. Okay. <laughs> You're alive. I am alive. <laughs> All right. Get, get, get out. Connor, the, you're seeing some freaky stuff happening, man. <sighs> Do we need to make sanity checks again? Yeah. Uh, Yes, now that this thing... No, you, you know what? Uh, I made you roll it before, so no. Uh, well, you know what? I'm. This is freaky as shit, but I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm going to keep shooting it. Okay. Um, oh, wait, character sheet. Where'd you go? But you're going to hit Pete and Nick. They're inside of it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting from the inside. Does using rice as a 
human body shield help me at all? Ah, good point. Oh um, Jeez Louise. Good point. Um, what did I roll to, to hit? I rolled well, you, uh, a 30. Well, you rolled seven damage. I mean, right. I lost. I did not parry or dodge. What, what it would do is it would give you uh, it would give you cover. Um, so that would mean I would be rolling it. Uh, um, well, it would it would actually take up some of the damage. So um, you could, yeah, armor. Yeah. So I'll give you two points of armor for that. Woo! But now, uh, <laughs> but but now. Uh, Thomas, it, it, you're holding just a, an upper half of a torso. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, you know? <laughs> and my attack roll was a 13 under 60. Nice. Uh, that would be... Mm, so that's, just that's over, one. not quite an extreme. So it is a, it's a hard hit. So you, you get your, yep. your regular damage. And I think that was a D10 for that handgun. D10 plus two, I believe. Uh, okay. Well, I rolled a three, so okay. five. Although it I thought it just said or maybe it's just just it just D10. says a D. Yeah, yours is just the D10. Uh, yeah, because I'm using my automatic, not my hand, my not my SMG. Okay. So three damage. Okay. <sighs> Uh, next up is uh, Walter. What are you doing there, man? That's some uh, scary uh, stuff going on. Yeah, uh, Walter is going to unload. Uh, so how does multiple shots work? Uh, for each shot, it's you're rolling it at uh, penalty. So you'd make uh, how many shots are you shooting there? Um, probably. Let's see here. You... Well, he just saw he just saw his childhood friend get eaten by this thing. <sighs> yes. It's, so it's very Walter, tragic. That's yeah. Even with all the things we've seen, that's pretty rough. So right. he's probably freaking out. He's gonna unload the thirty-eight. Okay. Um, thirty-eight uh, attacks. You can do a maximum of three. Okay. So you then that's make, what I will do. All right. Three penalty rolls. All right. One. Ooh, uh. <laughs> Hold on. That was one. Yes, that was one. That's two. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. That's three. All right. Um, so that was a a failure. Uh, wait a minute. 95. It's a revolver. It's not going to malfunction. So... That was, yeah, that was an. Well, eight. it's a thirty-eight automatic. Yeah, uh, malfunction. I think on it is. Yeah. Um. Here we go. Malfunction is a ninety-nine on a thirty-eight automatic. Okay. So you you didn't it didn't malfunction. So, um, you but you did uh, you did fumble. So we'll say that uh, you shot the, on on the third shot. The pistol actually goes out of my hand because I, I I'm just so bad at shooting guns. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's perfect. So yeah, you go one, two, three, and it just kind of the 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 recoil just causes you to drop your gun. Yep. Okay. All right, fall staff. What are you doing? Running. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna throw the body, the remaining body of Thomas Rice, at this thing. Okay. And I'm gonna backpedal. Can I shoot while I'm backpedaling? Uh sure. You could do that at uh, if you're going like at a full backpedal. You could do it at penalty. So would that be half speed? Yes. All right. So that would be four squares. Well, no, you can move four and shoot regular, or you can move full and shoot it at, uh, at penalty. I am going to move full and shoot a penalty okay because <laughs> i'm call. i'm charles falstaff i'm not gonna die here <laughs> <laughs> see i thought that this was a sequel so i thought you could die here well i'm not i'm not saying that because i know he lives on to stygian fragment i'm saying that because that's my character <laughs> like he's not gonna <laughs> He's not going to let himself die at this I'm not going to die here in this stinking warehouse. Right. On the ground like those two saps. 
All right, All right so... Make so how do you roll with penalty? <laughs> you can just hit the penalty roll down there at the bottom underneath the names. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, God. Yep, so that is a clear miss. Right. All right. Uh, we're to the thing in the box. The thing in the box is movement. Shit. Is 12. Oh, <laughs> shit. So it... Uh... Uh, I pose no threat. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't connected with a single attack in this entire game. <laughs> Walter's had a bad no day. Walter's bad day. <laughs> All right, uh, it's gonna. It attacks Walter at a twenty-eight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do uh, opposed. Okay. Oh God. Yep. Nah. That's. I think that's actually under. No, no, it's not. Nope. All right, so it comes. It it kind of bo it just rolls towards you. You can't really tell if it's it's like it's. it's um, has any kind of discernible like anatomy enough to like get up and move? It just kind of just tumbles at you, and then I'd like to flip a destiny point. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like? Does it uh, tumble uh, for you? I think so. Thirteen damage. And yeah, Walter had seven left. Walter so, had seven left. So it rolls up and just grabs oh, no. Walter by the legs and just. Um, Oh, uh, here you go. I, I, got, I have something for you here. Do it, do it. So uh, it rolls up over Walter. Walter, as it, Walter falls to the ground, as the the gelatinous mass rolls up, what what's left of Pete rolls up on top of Walter and then just kind of melds over him. <laughs> oh, God. And you go, uh, what's, what's, uh, what was this, the, the girl's name? I can't remember. Uh, Sally. Sally. Yeah, it was for this is for Sally. All right, poor Sally. <laughs> Twice a widow. Sally, I love. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Ugh. Okay. Connor better be GTFO and. I was really hoping Walter was going to be the only dude to survive, other than. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the thing goes. Plot armor. No, no, that's yeah. No, Walter has no plot armor whatsoever. <laughs> All right. Uh, Connor. Go, Connor. Go, Connor. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. After all these shenanigans, I'm gonna run. I oh, say we let uh, him go. I was gonna say uh, right, <laughs> right here <laughs> is a shotgun. That's like a poor. That's like almost like a musket looking thing, but. Uh, Yes. Nope. Running. Okay. Running. <laughs> Bye. 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 Peace. Peace out. Okay. Fuckers. <laughs> yep. I will just run. Um, I'll just sprint basically back towards the dock area because there was open doors back there, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. I'm just gonna run and run, 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 run. run. Okay. All right. Um, you the the two of you successfully flee. There's a running car outside. Oh yeah. Oh, hey buddy. You want you want to take a drive? You're driving. I'm fine with that. Where are we going? Just drive. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye. So, um da -da 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 -da. Epilogue. Um <laughs> rousing success. <laughs> the uh the Gedeki brothers, um, for some, they release a uh, a press release that uh, their youngest brother um, is missing, and they they have no idea, you know, where where he may be. He was last seen uh, in the company of um, this private eye, and uh, it turns out the private eye is now missing, um, as well as a a up and coming new. Uh, young lawyer for our, for uh, one of the most prestigious firms in in the city. Um, 
there are some there are some uh, rumors that uh, the the with the Falstaff name is, is kind of brought uh, mentioned, but as it turns out, um, where the the Gedeke brothers end up selling this uh, this warehouse and in and uh, burn it to the ground, uh, it is deemed condemned and they demolish it um, to open up uh, an apartment building. Oh, that's going to go so well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And yes, whatever happened what. to the monster in the box, no one knows. I'll tell you what else happens with the Gedeke brothers. Dun, dun, dun. They get hired by Charles Falstaff to do work on his house. That's right. He feels bad because... For uh, an exorbitant amount of money. <laughs> right. He feels really bad that they lost their brother. Uh, so, hey, we'll, we'll hire you on to renovate my house. And Charles Falstaff <laughs> does a tremendous job paying off multiple people yes. to ensure his name is never mentioned <laughs> with what happened at the, so the warehouse. What happens to... Uh, um, what happens Connor? to uh, Connor? Yeah. Um... Hmm, that's a great question. Well, he definitely does not shake the experiences that they went through. Um, hmm. I think he definitely wants to hang around and try to keep investigating Tommy's death. Okay. But he's being a lot more cautious and definitely drinking a lot more <laughs> like all the time all right. connor has a case of permanent loose stools <laughs> <laughs> i thought he had that already <laughs> i should just have charles have him killed <laughs> wow oh jeez <laughs> what are you talking about um connor connor's like an an awesome uh wet work man yeah, no, Connor. Uh, we we he knows share too much. a bond. <laughs> <laughs> no, if he wasn't so damn trustworthy, I probably would have him killed. But. On in the car ride away from the warehouse, they shared a marijuana cigarette. <laughs> yes, the, the reefer. <laughs> <laughs> it's reefer. 